brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler with Bueller. Tone 10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396 5555. Jacksonville. Attention. They are not ready for prime time. Prime time. Prime time. Prime time. That's the name. Prime time. Prime time. What time is it? Showtime prime time. It's XL Prime Time featuring Joe C. I reduced my toilet paper down to three squares. Matt Hayes. Big asses. No. Big thighs. Yeah. And Leon Searcy. Bringing you love, peace, and soul. How you like me now? Let's get it going. The two o'clock hour is here. You're halfway. Halfway to your happy hour, at least I would consider maybe an early happy hour. We could find some of those around town. But uh, the two to four slot, it's XL Primetime, and we are digging in, ready to rock and roll. Talking Jaguar football, college football. There's some stuff coming out of Gainesville that's at least positive for you Gator fans. Uh, and the wiping off the salary in Houston for Stefan Diggs is a big, big deal that we will get into, along with Josh Allen saying, hey, they're doing that. What are we doing here in Duval? All sorts of things to get into today. A beautiful Friday. I'm telling you what, the weather is rocking and rolling. I'm telling you, uh, after rain on Wednesday, which wiped out uh, our nine after five, right. uh, I had to apologize to the golf gods because apparently I just I pushed them too far, uh, and finally they wiped out our nine, nine after five on Wednesday. But the next, like, 10, 12 days, just nothing but gorgeous weather here on the first we coast. We got the heat arriving next week, yeah. bro. Yeah, get out. All 80s now. Yeah, but we're talking still going to be, I think, in the 50s at night, 60s and whatever. Just go embrace it. Yeah. Enjoy the heck Mm -hmm. out of it. Now, we got plenty to get into. Now, speaking of next week and beautiful weather, Augusta is calling. The Azaleas will be in full bloom. Mm -hmm. And we got a piece of news about Tiger Woods abstaining before Augusta that we definitely need to get into. uh, That's for sure. But I figured we would start off with this one piece of uh, the, it's, it's, it's a rivalry between Houston and Jacksonville. Fair to say, Leon, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's yeah. a rivalry, okay? If not now, more so, yeah. Yeah, exactly, because Jacksonville and the Texans have been in this AFC South since since the Houston Texans were born, mm-hmm. basically, and back and forth they've gone now with the last two AFC South banners hanging here in 2022, hanging there in 2023, and then you take a look at the offseason, what they've been able to do. Uh, they have made some moves, and of course, the Stefan Diggs deal is a big, big deal here in Duval because you're trying to figure out, wait a minute, did they just get one step ahead of us as far as the AFC South division race is concerned? Did they just get one step ahead of Duval as far as the AFC race is concerned? Well, then on the heels of the Stefan Diggs deal, and being traded from Buffalo to Houston comes the news yesterday that they wiped all the money, future money, off the table to where Houston doesn't have to feel the burden of those 20 plus million dollar contracts in 25 and in 26. They've paying him this year, but everything else has been wiped off. He's basically coming in basically as a free agent and playing for a bunch of cash on a one-year deal. One-year deal? Yeah, one-year deal. Prove a deal. That's it. For a perennial all-pro. And, and I don't thing, know how they pull that off. Uh, it, it, it drives me crazy because I don't know whether or not you could pull a deal off like that here in Jacksonville with Trent Baalke pulling the strings on a deal like that. I, I wonder. I'd love to know what you guys think. You guys can hit the text line uh, at 641-1010, designed by Lifetime Enclosures, and you know, give us that guy that you would love to have. If you can have him for one year, maybe take you to the top. I'm not saying Stefan Diggs is 100% going to do that, but the fact that they get him on a one year, he, you know what he you know what he is? He's an angry player that comes into Houston angry wanting to prove the last team that they made a huge huge mistake for dealing him and he's going to be the answer to that next big step. That's well, that, that that could be pretty powerful well, in the no, locker room. Not only will he be an answer on the football field, he's going to be an answer in the locker room. Every listen, I told you, you got to be very careful when t- when players leave organizations, what they say about them, because mm-hmm. they want to feel like they're sending you back. They're saying things like cancer, toxic, diva, crybaby, all that kind of stuff factors in to players when they when they leave one team and go to another. So not only does he want to be a perennial all star on the football field, but I'm sure he wants to be a class act in the locker room. And if if he with the kind of talent that he has and the, the kind of charisma that he has as, as a player, mm-hmm. I mean, 
he's he's going to be contagious in the locker room. Listen, I, I I've always been leery of organizations when they say they send the guy to you and he's a cancer and he's a toxin. More than likely, he's a good teammate. So if, right. he, if he could be a good teammate to that good young team and could put up some point, I mean, put up some stats that he put up when he was in Buffalo, they're going to be okay. I think they would. You know I, I always back the players, right? You know Absolutely, that, right? yeah. All right. I think it's very clear there's something going on there in Buffalo. And there has been for the last couple of years with he and Josh Allen. There's <clears> definitely <throat> some friction there. I don't know if that means he's a turd in the locker room. All I know is there's a lot going on right there. I, I can tell you what two. it is. I can, I can tell you what it is. It's all. It's never as a quarter. I, probably, it's never the quarterback's fault, and that that can weigh on teammates. Uh, that can weigh on. You're teammates. saying you're saying I, when teams lose, it's never the quarterback's I'm saying fault. That it's always, it, I'm saying they within, don't have enough around. I'm them. saying within that meeting room, right. within that right. locker room, right. I'm saying that when it, when it, Josh Allen is probably handled with a white glove. Okay, like right. he can't do but, no right. wrong. That was the yeah. point I was making with Trevor Lawrence last year, and I think Trevor's going to be a, a very good to great player. But at some point, you got to lay the blame on him. Okay, but let's make it clear: mm-hmm. it's never the quarterback's fault if they're a good quarterback, by and large. If there's a ba- if he's if, if he's continue- not right, yeah, yeah, yeah. If right. he just no continues to play bad, then they're going to pin it all on him. It's right. always that classic line: mm-hmm. they get more well, credit than they deserve, more blame than they deserve. Yeah, I absolutely agree. But but Joe, and when, and when in those meeting rooms, you know, or in those offensive meeting rooms, I've sat I've sat in offensive meeting rooms and, and hear coaching staffs gloss over. Certain guys who make mistakes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like when there's a pick, it's like, uh, you know, hey, Stefan, you got to run that. Uh, flat. Exactly. Run I'm that telling you, flat, I've, been, I've been in those meeting rooms. <laughs> I've been in those meeting rooms with coordinators and head coaches that, that, that they gloss over certain guys who make mistakes. And, and, right. and as a player, you know, you'll take your lumps, you'll take your criticism, you know, like a man, if right. you, you know. But then when you see somebody else in your, on, your, on your team, when he makes a mistake, it's, oh, okay, uh, y- y'all got to give him more time or, or, you got to run that right. And you're like, wait a minute now. It's not that Josh Allen was yeah. late with the throw well, and allowed the DB yeah. to go under. It's well, that you know, hey. Stefan Diggs should have flattened out. And then uh, I'm just saying, took that, it I'm away. just saying that kind of took stuff happens. Took away that opportunity. Right? I'm just saying that kind of stuff happens. But it is and funny. As a player, you can get frustrated. It is funny here. Half of Duval is saying Trevor's trash here, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other half is saying none of it was his fault. It was the receivers running the wrong routes. Exactly, it was the that play part. caller. It was, right, but those it, are the two ends of the, of the lunatic yeah. spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. the reality is some of it was his fault, and he's absolutely not trash, yeah. okay? Yeah. He's so, a good to potentially great player in the league. And so you, there's no question that there was a rift between Josh Allen and Stephon mm-hmm. Diggs. You could observe it on the sidelines towards the end of the – into the season. Towards the, on the last two seasons. Yeah, toward, yeah, was was yeah, I'm holding up two fingers towards right. the, end of the last two yeah. seasons. Yeah. So, anyway, one of the um, guys that does a good job following everything in the NFL, and I'm, I'm not sure who deserves credit for this, but in football is the one I'm reading, uh, and, and it says, Bombshell Report, and it says, Josh Allen went off on Stephon Diggs in the locker room after their week one loss after Diggs complained to Allen. Mm-hmm. And his quote was, it's one effing game, Allen told Diggs. So that was right off the jump. That was that first game. If that report is true, who they, they give credit to, to the – well, they give credit to the athletic for the one who put that out. Uh, and so it's one effing game. And so it was Diggs complaining to the quarterback, and you just have to make the assumption, Leon, mm-hmm. if a receiver's complaining, what is it usually about? Not getting the ball. Not getting the absolute ball. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Right? And so, and, and, he, and he said it's one effing game. And so then that, of course, I yes. don't know whether that, that carried on over the entire season or not, mm-hmm. but we all know it manifested itself on the sidelines at the end of the season mm-hmm. when Stephon Diggs was not getting the football. And look, you start taking a look around. Gabe Davis, you take a look at a highlight reel of Gabe Davis as he's coming to Jacksonville. He's a free agent signing here, and he got his share of footballs down the field, which meant – Every single time he was making a big play on the receiving end of Josh Allen throwing it to him, Steph on somewhere going, why ain't I getting that ball? You know how you know that's just how the receiver operates. Yeah, I agree. All right, so this goes down, and you have Steph on Diggs now property of the Houston Texans. You basically have him as a free agent. Uh, one of the um, cap guys that keeps track of this stuff basically added it all up. He said this is like a forty million dollar deal for Steph on one year, and then Houston can either re-sign him. They can give him a big bonus. They can do whatever, or he moves on. So, this tweet was put out by a, a Jaguar fan, a Duval fan, and Josh Allen liked it. Okay, this is not Josh Allen saying this. This is just him liking it. Uh, and this is one Jaguar fan's opinion. This is my frustration with the, with the organization. We don't go for the kill. Houston, seeing what they have, 
didn't care about draft picks, money, or personnel. You can say that about Tennessee, too. But Houston put themselves at the, as the front runner to beat KC. Scared money makes, and he goes on to say it. Anyway, Josh Allen hits the like button on that bad boy. And whenever and, – and, and by the way, his social media account has not been very active. Right? Since December, mid-December of 2023, he had, he had not tweeted or replied to anything. Yeah. So it, he did then. So almost, in almost five months, he does that. He's, t- he's taken it off since. Yeah. But the reality is, if he's feeling that way, there are others on that team that are feeling that way too. Am I not right? You could, you could be. You could be right. Oh, Josh Island might be saying, yeah, um, you know, I need some of that money. I, I want to be a part of this Yeah, he, you could interpret it. Yeah, you can interpret it either ways. way you want to. I mean, what, what, I, I think, listen. It's the off season, all right. It, it, this is a clear overreaction of what the Houston Texans are doing. No, they look no, good no, on don't paper. Overreact, it, it, I, I really do. This is a clear overreaction. Stephon Diggs is is a great player, uh, but yeah, he's a great player. And the, the, the Texans seem to be maneuvering in the right direction. Right. All right you got to remember now, we had to lose for them to win the division. All right. Let's 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 put that yeah, out. Make there that right clear. Now. We had to lose for them to win the division. Uh, that's what I'm saying. They didn't. Uh, all they right. Didn't, I, so, I'm, I'm just saying they didn't outright win the division. We lost. And sure, they, won. they did. We handed it to them. They won games when they had to. They won games, but we we had well, to lose for them to win the division. So wait, okay. So hang on. So did the Jaguars is, win the division in 2022, or did, or did the Titans lose yeah, it? T- Titans lost. Titans lost. Oh come on, stop yeah. it. They had to win games. Right. Both they had both to had win to games. Well, both to finish to off to finish off this tweet yeah. real quick that Joe was reading. Yeah. It basically says scared money makes no money. We have the QB, we have the coach, but we have a scary ass GM. Mm-hmm. Fix Cam's deal, resign Josh and call MFing Sam Fran. Mm-hmm. So, that's mm-hmm. the frustration of the fan which I totally get. That's we all out there, them. man. We that's that's not them. just Josh. That's then, all out there. But then 41 just yeah, just hits that like button and then he t- he takes it down a little bit later he, on. Yeah, he's poking the bear a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he still wants a deal absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I have no problem with that. Well, yeah, he, he yeah, he, his he might you know, it said sign Josh Allen, but that was among four other things. Right. Yeah. Right. So, if it was just Josh Allen, you think that's the only reason he's doing it, that's fine. There's other things on there. And He's it not may have been, liking that with all those no, things. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, okay. I agree. Right. I totally agree. Yeah, or it may have just just the the bulky comment too. He could have just said, "I, I like it based on that part of it." All right. So you guys react to that six four one ten ten. Let us know what you think about it. Because, Honestly, here's this. Honestly, yeah. here, this is what are where they're at right now. Brandon Ayuk's going somewhere. Okay, is it going to be the Bills or is it going to be the Jags? Because the Bills need a receiver now. No doubt about that. Right. And two days ago, you weren't saying it. We, they was overreacting. Two days ago, you were saying, "What's their move?" Now all of a sudden you change your story a little bit, sir. Yeah. So now it's overreaction for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who are the Texans? I mean, y'all giving them y'all. I, y- y- I mean, I'm not crowning them. I'm just saying, no. y'all. If you want to crown them, go ahead. You got. If you want to crown them, I ain't go Dennis ahead. Green in them. If you want to knight them, go ahead and knight them. And First off, it's the NFL. I don't yeah. crown anybody right, other, well, other than Pat hey, Mahomes. There you go. So that, it's that the that NFL. Part, right. That's number yeah. one. I mean, what I'm but saying. But secondly, is, my point is, they they're look good going out and making moves to put themselves in position. To win the division again and to run it, get a deep run in the playoff. Well, listen, I, you, you what, yourself said this isn't about the division for them anymore. This I, is about that, winning that, it all. That's what that's what I can applaud them for. It, it doesn't seem like they, they're going after the division. It, it seems like they're going after the 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 Titan. I call the Titan the the Chiefs, right? right. The head honcho. Yeah, that, 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 they're making moves and maneuvers to compete against them. All right, the division is a, is a, is a, is a in their minds. Right, the division sure. is theirs. Sure. That's, that's well, why. I mean, why would they think that way? Right? That's why Jacksonville should feel insulted because right now I think they're making moves to say, "Hey, how can we underneath this rookie deal with C.J. Stroud? We know we got our guy. Mm-hmm. How can we make these moves and maneuver to make us competitive against the team that we got to beat to get to the promised land, which yeah. is the Kansas City Chiefs?" Right. Well, Leon, this I mean, was yeah. this was a tweet to kind of help you, and this is what Josh Allen said. Uh, Christian Kirk also uh, reacted to once the news came down that Stephon Diggs was a Houston Texan. So this is what Kirk said. He said, where's the faith at? Are we just going to lay down before we even take a snap? And then Josh Allen, to your point, Leon, it feels like, he says, the battles are always won or lost in the trenches. Hashtag check the tape. Yeah, Mm -hmm. and and so it's on, okay? It's on. It's a line scrimmage league, baby. And think about it. Doug Peterson's got to prove that he is a winning coach, that he can get this team back to the postseason, that he Mm -hmm. can take control of the play calling duties, and he can make this a better product. It is an opportunity to step right back in the ring and go toe-to-toe with them and win the division. A two-year period now where mm-hmm. two teams have won the AFC South, and, and we've, we've, we've gone over this a bunch. 
But after Jacksonville won in 2022, they said, we like our locker room. And they basically stayed. The only big free agent swing was the acquisition of Calvin Ridley, basically. Mm -hmm. And then the next year, the other team wins the division, and they start adding the Daniil Hunters, Stephon Diggs, the Danico Autry, Joe, Joe, Joe Mixon. Mixon. Those are four yeah. mega yeah. signings. Yeah, and they are. They are. All right, so I'm going to use this as a jumping off point uh, with the 10-10 take because – if you're talking to like they went out and signed, those are four major free agents. Jacksonville signed a bunch of free agents too to step in as starters. Are they as good? Not quite sure. Now, Joe C's 1010 tape. Slow smoked and served up by Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. So if you're doing the math, just take a look at what Trent Balky has done and take a look at how bad the draft has treated this football team and how much they have to rely on free agents. So if you go over this roster right now, and I tweeted this out, at 1010XL Josie, you can see it. Three free agents starting on the offensive line. Three more free agents starting at wide receiver. Starting free agent at tight end. Starting free agent at defensive tackle, now in Armstead. Foye, free agent. Two more free agent starters in the secondary with Darby and Savage. That's half of the team not coming from your draft. How confident are you, bulky can find stars this go around. That's 11 of 22, not counting Duvernay, who also would be considered a starter, that you had to go out and, and, and sign. Well, and your kicker. Yeah, so he, yeah. and that's... your kicker, the, that well, sly cat. Well, usually when, that's you a to, lot. usually when you have to go out and get free agents, it's mean, it means that you didn't do anything, that mm -hmm. either the players that you drafted weren't developed in the well, draft or you missed on the guy in the draft. Dude, all, usually that's what you get guys a free agent for. Yeah, all we have to do – Balky now is responsible for the 21 draft, mm -hmm. the 22 draft, and the 23 draft. This will now be his fourth draft. Uh, he was part of 2020 when he came in as an assistant under Dave Caldwell. But if you go back and you take a look at who is left on this football team, just go back to the guy we just brought up, Josh Allen, from the 2019 draft. Uno. Mm -hmm. Logan Cook, the punter. Okay, that's it. Right. Okay, that is it. Uh, from the 19 and the 20 and then the 21, you got Trevor, you got ETN, you got Devon. You just don't have a whole hell of a lot of guys that have come through the draft on this football team. And so that still lies at his feet. And then, of course, the the leftovers uh, from, from Dave Caldwell. I looked at a stat this morning, and this is teams without first-round draft picks, all right? Mm -hmm. Without first-round draft picks. This qualifies as a saucy nut because Jacksonville – has had the luxury, by and large, through the last decade and some change, to be drafting in the top ten over and over and over. And they had back-to-back -back number one picks with Trevor and Trayvon. But this is uh, teams that drafted outside of the first round that had starters on their team last year. The L.A. Rams did not have a first-round pick. They had three starters through the rest of their draft. The New Orleans Saints – outside of the first round, had four starters through the 2023 NFL Draft. The Browns won, the Dolphins won, and the Broncos had four. So that, those were teams outside of their first-round draft cho choices that put people in starters' roles. Saucy nugs. How many did this this team do? Well, I, How many? I mean, How many? Outside of the first round. Anton outside Harrison, of the first round? Yeah, Anton Harrison's a starter, but outside of the first round, how many starters did this team have? Out Cisco? of the 23 draft. Out of the 23 draft. Oh, out of the 23 draft. Yeah. Oh, well, Ant Anton Harrison. Yeah, that's it. Nobody else. No. Outside of – So, meanwhile, the other teams are getting more than one outside of the first round. It's The problem is it's not just one position. You know, you know why they had to add – Darby and they had to add Savage right. because they haven't been able to draft a corner. Well, it's funny because the two that you, we just mentioned, those are two starters in the secondary that also mm -hmm. replaced free agents. Right. Mm -hmm. Savage replaces Rayshon. You know why they signed Dar Darius Williams? Because Darby, they missed on corners. Darby like replaces CJ Henderson. Darby replaces Darius Williams. And so you had to sign those two original free agents because you didn't hit on your draft. And now you got to go back to the well with another set of free agents at those positions. Look, you could even say, you know why they signed Morse? Because you did Because they feel center. like they missed on their center. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so th that that's the part that I'm sure is driving a lot of Jaguar fans crazy. All right, so you guys jump in. 641-1010. We will crank it out today. we got to get to the Tiger. Uh, sleepless nights, okay? Let me just tell you something. He's giving up something 
for a green jacket. Is it worth it? We'll ask Big Search that question. It is XL Primetime. Joe C., Matty Hayes, Leon Searcy, and RJ Son. The First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. I get it. You're here because you feel like something's missing. you got some longing for something more. We're going to give you that thing. 1010XL, giving you something more. Duck Duck Rooter is now hiring plumbers. We offer excellent weekly pay, paid holidays, health insurance, 401k, and so much more. Apply now at DuckDuckRooter.com. That's DuckDuckRooter.com and click on the careers page. Duck Duck Rooter is an equal opportunity employer. Mia here, and if you're still in the hunt for a sports book to call home, at the nonstop action of the madness with my bookie. MyBookie is a one-stop shop for all your sports betting and casino needs, complete with a real-life Vegas experience right from the comfort of your phone. Take your viewing experience to the next level with real-time live betting that lets you stream and bet the games right from the MyBookie website. Sign up now and take advantage of a generous welcome bonus on your first deposit, all the way up to 1000 bucks. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. And the fun doesn't stop there. You'll get up-to-the-minute odds, props, and this week's expert predictions to help you decide who to put your money on. Put in $200, get $300 ready to play instantly using promo code 1010XL. The best part about MyBookie? You can bet on anything, anytime, from anywhere. Use promo code 1010XL to secure your welcome bonus today. Only with MyBookie. Rick Ballou for Carlson Dental. You know, I've been telling you this for quite some time because it's true. I hate going to the dentist, or at least I used to hate going to the dentist. I had total anxiety, and then I tried sedation, light sedation for cleaning and deep sedation as well for cavities and root canals. Folks, it's an incredible experience. So don't be nervous. Don't be scared. Go to carlsondentalgroup.com. That's carlsondentalgroup.com for all of your dental needs. Plenty of hot spots all over the First Coast, from the beaches to Riverside, San Marco, and St. Aug. If you're out and about and having fun, make sure you designate a driver so everyone on the road gets home safely. Budweiser, reminding you to play it smart. St. John's, live local radio for Jacksonville. 1010 XL, 92.5 FM. Let's fire up the flavor and ignite those appetites. Let's slow down and smell the barbecue. Because all your favorites are smoked for hours and ready for eating when you are. From our famous ribs to slow smoked pork. Enjoy some perfection by the plateful, safely in our dining room or in the comfort of your home. With curbside pickup, drive through and delivery. Sonny's Barbecue, local pit masters since 68. We love talking sports on 1010XL, and I-9 Sports love giving kids the perfect way to grow up playing sports. Summer and fall registration is underway, and if you log on to i9sports.com, you'll see all they've got to offer for kids three and up. And don't forget to enter 1010 in the promo code for a discount on registration. Year-round sports all across the First Coast, from St. John's, Duval to Clay. Summer and fall registration open right now. Fort Family Field in Westside Middle or online at i9sports.com. Get your kids in the game with i9. Have you tried golfing at the improved Cimarron Golf Club? If you haven't, tell you what, you're missing out on the best deal in Jacksonville. Now, many of you have received a postcard in the mail, and of course, if you bring that with you, $45 plus tax to play. That includes a cart, lunch, and a beer at the brand new Stone Barrel Cap House. Now, go to the website, that is CimarronGolfClub.com, and sign up for the Wild One Loyalty Program. That's the Wild One Loyalty Program, and get all of these specials emailed to you from Cimarron. New and pre-owned firearms are always in stock at Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jacksonville Beach. Want a new sidearm or rifle? Brands like Kimbar, Smith & Wesson, Sig Sauer, and Beretta. No lines, no hassle. Beaches Jewelry and Pawn in Jack's Beach. Visionaries, builders, and doers, are you ready to change the world? Miller Electric is your opportunity to shape the future. Miller Electric is leading the charge in electric vehicle technology with our state-of-the-art EV Innovation Design Center. We're working to create a sustainable future. We're also the proud partners of the Jacksonville Jaguars, powering their performance at the brand-new Miller Electric Center. Miller Electric, we provide competitive pay, unbeatable benefits. Apply today. MillerCareers.com, Miller Electric, an equal opportunity employer. Time now for a medical recap. A health and wellness tip from Jaguars head team physician, Dr. Kevin Kaplan. Strength and resistance training are some of the best forms of exercise you can do to strengthen your muscles and improve your body composition. 
It may also lead to important improvements in metabolic health, meaning your blood sugar levels are easier to manage, and it also increases how many calories you burn at rest. The Physical Activity Guidelines for Americans recommends resistance training twice per week in addition to cardio training. Let's get fit, Jacksonville. Florida Home AC, the official AC partner of the Jaguars, make them your AC partner with honest cost estimates before they start the work with no hidden fees. Call 777-4300 for Florida Home AC. 1010XL is presented by Vara and Vara, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Crank it out. A little rock and roll. It could be any type of rock and roll. RJ, this is your first foray into the big hair, heavy metal Friday. So, look, it doesn't have to be... He's coming out of the box with Dawkin right now. Yeah, yeah, which is good. Crushed. Look, I like some of that old school. Well done, big hair. RJ. That's right. Raising the on. roof, RJ. Uh, but you can uh, you can hit up RJ the DJ. It used to be JJ the DJ. Right. That's now RJ. it's RJ the DJ uh, at 6-4-1-10-10. Uh, and bring Give me props, Leon. Yeah. Stop shaking yeah. your head, man. It used to be my homie like you act like you don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know who you are right now. And by the way, it could be any good rock and roll. Okay, any good rock and roll. Doesn't matter what the genre is, uh, time, uh, anything. Doesn't matter. Uh, six four one ten ten. You get the text line uh, and give us one there. We got to get into Tiger, but I did like this one off the text line uh, that said we're the only team to have a savage, a strange, and a tank. Uh, but are they tough enough? Because savage, strange, and tank does sound pretty good. Mm. Uh, but are they tough enough? That's the question. Uh, will they be tough enough? Uh, are they going to get more? out of a third-round running back in Tank Bigsby? Are they going to get more out of a second-round draft pick in Britain Strange? Uh, we'll find out. But there's no getting away from the fact that that many players had to be brought in via free agency versus the draft that are starting and making an impact on this football team. Mm-hmm. Can't get away from it. No, that's alarming, to be quite honest with you. We were just talking about it off the air. Were you saying, for what? You know, offensive you, like side, there's Joe four. Joe kind of gave them a little more than they should have, actually. Yeah, there's, yes. there's four starters <laughs> that they drafted on, on the offensive side of the ball. You're talking about Trevor, ATN, Cam, mm-hmm. Anton Harris, and, Anton, yeah. and then the rest of free agents. And the yeah. defense is – And, the defense is, and that, by the way, that's three offensive linemen, three, three, three wide receivers, and a, and a star tight end. Yeah. yeah. You, and the you, defense, since they're going 4-2-5, we refigured the number. Yeah, let's now. take Mumba off right. of this list because it's, it's, there's, he's not, yeah, he hasn't yeah, been a starter. We don't know if he's going to be a starter. So you have Devin Lloyd – it's one of your draft picks. You got mm-hmm. Trayvon. You of course have Josh. Those are your three guys. You could put Devon in there, so that's four. And then you go to the back and you go Campbell and Cisco. And so now you are you're at you're at six instead mm-hmm. of seven. Mm-hmm. So if you go four two five, yeah. So, which means you're ten guys. You have ten of your twenty two guys tw- are drafted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you know what? And you might put it if if you go four two five, you, you you're taking one off. You're putting Antonio Johnson back in there. So it's still basically the same math. So, but but we all get the point. Is yeah. that they just don't have enough when it comes to developing talent. And, heck, like we said, the Rams, they didn't have a first-rounder, but what did they do? They went out and got two quality defensive linemen, Colby Turner, a big-time player, mm-hmm. and then Puka Nakua. You guys know my, my Puka crush that I have on, on, on him. I mean, those were guys drafted much later than mm-hmm. Thursday night, first round of the NFL draft. But you got to remember what the Rams did, too. They shot their shot. You know, they, 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 over, they brought in free agents. They put they brought in a conglomerate of guys, yeah. and they won the Super Bowl. Yeah, they did. You know, it was costly, mm-hmm. but the, the hoist that Lombardi is well worth it. Now, you know, now they're in the situation where now they can't. Now they don't have any first round picks. Right. So all the guys that they get in the second, third, fourth, fifth round, they they've got to be exact. They got to develop them. Yeah. And they got to be showstopper. They yeah. do hit. I know. That's what, I, that's they what hit I'm with saying. Cooper Cup. Yeah. They, they got to make hay. And so now they're just now getting back in the first round. They haven't been in the first round since Jared Goff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's been a minute, man. Mm-hmm. And so they get back in and give Les Need all the credit in the world. He is their Trent Balky. I don't know if he would accept that as a compliment. Uh, Les, he, the Les same Snead's raspy like, voice. Yeah, Les Snead's like, you take that back. Uh, but Les Snead is their For all GM. all you know, they're like best buds. <laughs> <laughs> he is their GM, and he was pulling strings originally to bring in OBJ, to bring in Vaughn, to make the deal for Matt Ramsey. Stafford all, and Jalen. All those decisions that he made, big swings, and said, you know what, we're going to give up draft capital, but we're going to get the now. We're playing for the now. We're trying to win a ring. We'll suffer our lumps later. And you wouldn't know it based on the team 
that they were that they were missing so many first round draft picks because they stayed pretty competitive. Right. They, they had one. Really, they they had really one suffer. crappy year. Yeah, one. And then they put themselves mm-hmm. right back in the conversation last year, and at the very least, made it to the postseason. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what. So if the Jaguars pulled, the, you know, they pulled the strings on the um, on your boy Aku Ayuk. Ayuk. I, I, yeah. I, I have no problem with it. They, if, if they gave up the draft cap, they wouldn't be overreacting if they did that. Mm-mm. No, right. they would be. No, yeah. I'm. I, look, I'm with you. I think if you're if if you think they need if you being you being the Jaguars, if you think you need that type of receiver on your on your roster, a guy that can get deep and can stretch the field, and he's clearly an ascending player, right? There's no doubt about that. Yeah. All right? And did, if you feel it, yeah, I want, it's I want a better, them to it's a feel better it. odds of him, of him not only performing well, but you keeping him than the 17th overall Yeah, I, I want them to feel it. I don't want it to be a knee-jerk reaction with what the Texans did. Hell with what they're doing. Yeah. If you, if, if he, Ayuk is going to make us better, it's going to give Trevor another weapon along with what we have right now, and we protect Trevor and give him the time, then pull the string. Right, right but maybe yeah, two, give up maybe two right weeks now. ago. Right, but maybe two weeks ago, they didn't want to give up 17. Mm-hmm. They would have given up a two. Now maybe because the Texans pulled the string again, not just for well, one player, but yeah. four major players. True. Now maybe you start to think, all right, mm-hmm. now yeah. maybe we might have to give up that first. All right, mm-hmm. RJ, s- serve up the X poll because that is what it is. Ayuk I- makes the most sense, and we may get some comments as far as that one guy that you could bring in for one year and you think would, would take you to the top. H- hit the uh, X poll question. Absolutely. The poll question presented by Beaver Chevrolet. Who is a player that you can think of that the Jags can bring in for a one-year deal and that one-year deal will take them over the top? Give us your thoughts below on X at 1010XO. Yeah, real simple. Ayuk does make a heck of a lot of sense, and you may not be able to keep him forever. Calvin was a one-and-done, okay? He was a rental, and not knowing for sure 100% if Ayuk would be a rental, but he would be thinking about getting paid. But you have a chance to sure. keep him. Once of you, course once you do. Once you've got him, you yeah. can throw a tag on him. The yeah. worst comes to worst. Yeah. yeah. Of yeah. course you do. Uh, all right, Texter, uh, if rookies are coming in starting immediately, that means you have a lack of talent. Oh, I, 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 I totally get it. But at the same time, they've had to rely on too many free agents Three years after the after they had a draft class, four years after they had a draft class, right, there's a lack they've of talent because you've missed on draft. Picks. They've had to replace free agents with free agents because <laughs> they haven't drafted well. I, I, honestly, that's where they are right now. Mm-hmm. You're right, absolutely. All right, and I'm, I'm just thinking about Ayuk also too. I mean, this may down the road some, somehow influence Trevor's contract if you bring in a guy like Ayuk because mm-hmm. if he come in. You bring in Ayuk on a one year deal, knowing you got to pay him next year, and right. you know Trevor is going to be—he's going to be operating to get his deal done. If he knows that he's got all this, he may leverage his contract to where you would be able to keep some of these guys. If you—if you—if you serious about trying to win the championship, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just saying that Ayuk comes here. Let's say Ayuk put up puts up 1,300, 10 touchdowns, all right, and, and ninety and ninety catches, and you got to pay him next year, and you know you got to pay Trevor. And let's say Josh's deal is already over. I'm just saying that. Well, do you win the division, get in the playoffs? You, win the, you go to how far the, in the playoffs? I, you you go to let's say you go to the AFC Championship game. Oh, well, then that's a different story. Then I, I think then you're talking about yeah. I think it's his, it would be his second contract, which is going to be a big contract, huge contract. So I I, I mean I, I wouldn't advise him to do that. I'd advise him to get all the money he can and let them figure out the rest of it. Who cares? Oh, I I totally agree. I'm totally. I'm just saying if he goes down the the, the Brady tree. You know, mm-hmm. you know, Drake, yeah, you, Brady's always yeah. been about that. Yeah. You know, I, I'll take less to make sure we keep the team together. I don't, I don't recommend that. Those are like right. third and fourth contracts for Brady. I know, I, I know, but I don't recommend that. Yeah. Right? When you've made get it all you can, right? Yeah. Now. Get that, especially with that first. Oh, the big, first big one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and it's really truly your second contract, but if you play well, it's your first big one. It is a mega Huge. deal. We're talking about what three hundred million. It'll be Jeez. north of a quarter bill, yeah, I think. $55 million annually probably, yeah. somewhere around yeah. there. Which is just nuts. All right, now, uh, this guy's made some coin in his day. <clears throat> and he says, you know what? I don't care about the coin. I don't care about anything else. I want to win another green jacket. Mm. So Tiger Woods, as the story goes, he will speak to the media next Tuesday on the grounds of Augusta. Uh, but he is let it out there that he is giving it up so he can go for another green. Now, we don't know what the state of Tiger's game is, but the simple question is, uh, like, honestly, if you go back in the day, Rocky had to do this to win a championship. I was going to say, you say he's giving what up, though? You say he's giving it up. Well, just listen to this, okay? Women weaken legs. See, Rocky gave it up back then, and it was straight, uh, you know, a Mick edict, okay? Women weaken legs, Rock. And he made him give it up so he could be ready and fresh. 
And Tiger, at the very least, just says, I'm, I'm giving up under the covers so I can go for a green. Uh, what do you think, sirs? Would you ever do this? I, I have done it. You have? With the mass majority of my career, yeah. You have to give it up. You have to. There's a certain day in the week where you got to say, Baby, you know, you know, Mama, you, you can't get nothing now. You got to say it. You got to <laughs> yeah, say it. I don't it. believe it. You don't have to believe it. I'm telling you what's happened. I, I say it, my day was Thursday. You can get all the love you can no. to Thursday. You cut off Thursday. So you shut off Friday you're and Saturday. You're telling me if she, if she comes in the room Friday looking for a little shimmy sham, you're telling her no. I'm telling her no. What's more important? And I, hey, I don't do, do you like this house that keeps you happy? <laughs> huh? you, 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 like, you, like the, you like the chandelier? You like the You the can bed. like all of that, I'm just bro. Saying that she my comes effort, saunting into your what room. Pay, what pays for that? that those luxuries. I'm not disagreeing with you. All I right agree then. with you completely. Well, all I'm telling me, you I is need, she comes sauntering in. I see it on your face right now. Don't give me that. I need. I need to be 100. percent yeah. The big fella needs the strength. I like the right. focus. I like the focus. Exactly. I see it on your I've face right now. You would, you would melt I've had to turn it down many times. <laughs> she came in begging one time. I said, listen, baby, the big daddy is done for the night. All right, so 641-1010 if you're willing to give it up to get the green. Okay, that's what we want to know. Are you willing to give it up to get the green? Because that's what Tiger's going for. He now has 15 majors. He's got five green jackets. Yeah, but he's, he's not trying. guaranteed to get the green. Like, if you're no, saying, if you're telling no, me, but, you will get a green jacket if you give it up for but, five days. But that's what I he mean, I can do that stand on my head. Hey, listen, Rock didn't know he was going to win the title. As a matter of fact, he didn't that first time. Okay, but you, in other words, you still have to make the sacrifice mm-hmm. to see if you can get to the finish line. But Big Sur says the sacrifice is the actual, you know, abstaining. Yeah. That's yeah. the sacrifice, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, it, it, of course, it's easier on the road, all right? It's easier on the road because you leave your town and go. Right. Now, if, you, if you're if you at home, you know, the wife will still come by, you know, the hotel, because you usually go in the hotel maybe that Friday yeah. or that Saturday yeah. before the games or whatever. And, you know, you... you, you she dressed nice. She dressed nice, done. smelled good, whatever. Nails Get a room done. on the first floor. Smells good. Get a room, yeah. You ever that. tell her no? I have to, bro. You will fold like a house of cards. Nah, you bro. The big fella got better strength than you think. <laughs> All right, let us know. 641-1010, what you think. We'll get into that. We got to get into the NCAA tournament. Final four. Are there upsets out there? Can the Wolfpack pull it off? Can Bama roll tide and take care of UConn? UConn uh, got a lengthy delay getting off the ground, getting out to Phoenix. So we'll find out whether that affects them or not. But we'll talk a little March Madness and Final Four coming up on XL Primetime. Buckle up. You're in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios with XL Primetime on 1010XL. Find your new Honda at your eight local Honda dealers. The great thing about live sports, you never know what's going to happen. Oh, how did he pull that off? Get the most live play-by-play on 1010XL. Joe C. for Preferred Roofing, Preferred Builders, local company that is really in the construction game, there to win. They want you to win. They want you to be happy with everything that you get whenever the job is done. And so when you're looking at replacing a roof, and that's expensive, but you also want to make sure that if you're going to spend that money, it is done correctly. And that's why you need licensed, insured, bonded, tried and true preferred roofing company to take care of you. Make sure you log on preferredroofingjacks.com. You can see the service that they can offer you. And then preferredbuildersjacks.com. When it comes to remodels, additions, brand new homes, they can take you soup to nuts. Make sure you check out preferredbuildersjacks.com. Jimerson Burr is a full-service Florida-based commercial law firm dedicated to helping businesses manage risk, maximize opportunities, and move their company forward. Jimerson Burr attorneys are business-oriented lawyers equally comfortable as community leaders, private transaction counselors, or courtroom advocates. If you have a legal issue of any kind affecting your business, contact the firm at 389-0050 or jimersonfirm.com. Baloo here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit smunezvision.com today. Care you can see. 
Hello, First Coast. I'm sure by now you have seen our bright green GFL trucks and containers throughout the greater Jacksonville area. We're an industry leader in solid waste and would love the opportunity to earn your business. We're committed to customer service, reliability, and have an unwavering focus on safety. Whether commercial or construction, let us haul your waste away. Call 904-760-5880 to get a quote today from GFL, Green for Life. Life has its share of challenges, and when it puts you to the test, make sure you reach out to Rebound Rehabilitation to give you the quickest path back to full health and confidence. Rebound Rehab, specializing in helping patients overcome back pain and sciatica, arthritis, and fibromyalgia, just to name a few. Rebound Rehab, locations covering the entire First Coast, getting you back in control with a pain-free life. Sports injury, workplace injury, whatever it might be, you can rebound. Log on to reboundrehab.com for more info. I'm here with Danny Van Sickle, director of the Electrical Training Alliance. Danny, tell me about your program. Hey, Rick. We're a five-year electrical apprenticeship. Our students start out making over $40,000 a year and right now graduate making over $90,000 a year, including benefits. There is no tuition or no student debt. You just have to apply and get accepted. Did you say no tuition and no student debt? You heard that right, Rick. Once you're accepted to the program, your only cost are the books and the course fees. About $800 a year. That sounds like an amazing opportunity. How can I learn more? Just go to ETAJAX.org and you can apply there. Apply by May 23rd. Gator fans, get ready. The Orange and Blue game is back on Saturday, April 13th at 1 p.m. in the Swamp, and entry is free. This year, Florida Victorious is proud to sponsor the game, and we have tons of new excitement in store for you, like our player meet and greet and autograph session after the game on Steve Spurrier Field. As a member of Florida Victorious, you can visit with players on the team, including Mertz and Legway. Don't miss out on FanFest, which begins at 10 a.m. on the North Lawn. Visit the Florida Victorious tent to learn more about the team and membership benefits. And also meet Gator student-athletes. Join us for the chance to win a brand-new Chevy Silverado on the field. Brought to you by Southern Chevy Dealers and Florida Victorious. Learn more about Florida Victorious and become a member at FloridaVictorious.com. And help us make Florida Victorious. This state in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On April 5th, 1959, at the 23rd Masters Tournament, Art Wall Jr. wins his only PGA Tour major victory one stroke ahead of Gary Middlecoff. Imagine waking up this time next week and being 100% debt free. No credit cards, no car loan, no personal loan. Hey, it's Prosser here, and Loan Pronto's Equity Express line of credit can make that happen. Homeowners are turning their home equity into cash almost instantly. With Loan Pronto's AI-based system, you can get approval in about 10 minutes with almost no documentation, no appraisal, and no hassle. You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home. Use that money to pay off all your other loans. The average homeowner saves over $850 a month doing this. Listen, your home value is way up. You can use that to wipe out all those credit cards, get some money for a home improvement. Literally hundreds of thousands are at your fingertips, and approval is just minutes away. So call now, 904-999-1508, 904-999-1508. That's LoanPronto.com at 904-999-1508. NMLS 1661781, subject to lender approval, equal housing lender. Navy Mutual was created by service members for service members, so we know what it means to serve. Our policies have no active duty service restrictions, so you can rest assured that you're covered no matter your duty station, home or abroad. To go even further, we promise that premiums will not be higher for those who serve in dangerous environments, including aviation, diving, or on deployments. Let us help you protect those you love the most. Learn more at NavyMutual.org. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. Hanging out on a beautiful Friday. You want to bring some rock and roll suggestions RJ's way. You can do it at 641-1010. It is XL Primetime. New slot, 2-4. to four. Thanks for hanging out with us, Joe C., Matty Hayes, Big Leon Cersei, and RJ. And we've got Coach Campo coming in in the 3 o'clock hour. Uh, we did ask the question, uh, the abstin- abstinence question um, off the text line, designed by Lifetime Enclosures. My brother is an Olympic track athlete. 
their coach made it mandatory. No sex meet week. And so another one chiming in on social at 1010XLJOC. Look on uh, the tile formula for men. Uh, Men ain't made to be wasting their power and energy. Have to keep it inside you. Leon is 1,000% right. All right, you guys can keep it coming with that. And we also have some other suggestions when it comes to would you, what would you do, who would you go for if you're looking for that one get you to the top type of deal if you had them for one year. Uh, Ayuk, obviously, is going to be a lot of people's suggestions. Ayuk would help ETN tremendously, says one of our texters. Another threw in the T. Higgins possibility. Uh, which certainly is not impossible. If you're going to try and make a big swing for a guy, T. Higgins definitely uh, would be a guy that you would think Trevor would love to have in the arsenal. Uh, Another one said next year's one and a fourth for Ayuk uh, because it's going to take something to pry him away. It's going to take something to pry uh, T. Higgins away from Cincinnati, that's for sure. Uh, And then also real quick on the Tiger question, pull the string or pull the trigger. I get you. I know exactly where you're going there. I know exactly where you're going. Undefeated. Right. That's my response to it, okay? Undefeated. It is undefeated. But say that's why you stay away. All right, now, uh, we had thrown out that question about the decisions that Balky's made in the free agent world versus decisions made in the draft world. There is one social handle out there on X. It's the uh, Balky malpractice class. My <laughs> gosh, man. He goes through and highlights them as far as green is good. That means they're starters. Yellow means they got a little bit of potential mm-hmm. still left. And then red means, and that's an bueno. I'm telling you, take a look at that one. There are a ton of decisions that have been made uh, by, by the leader, Trent Baalke, uh, that have not necessarily worked out. I saw a lot of red over there. There's a lot of red, okay? You just take a look at that, and I'm telling you, it's just on and on and on, the list of the guys that have Mm. basically either come and gone or have come and they're sitting down on the bench. And, look, you can't can't hit them all. Mm -mm. It's hard enough to hit 50% of your draft picks. I totally get it. You're not going to get every single one of them right. But when you have draft classes, leave your building, like in total – when you only have one left in Logan Cook or one left in Josh Allen, that's that's not good. That's not good. And that's not just his draft classes. That's the Jaguars GMs over the last well, it's also handful of when, years. When you also compound the problem by also failing on some free agent signings as well, that yeah. puts you completely behind because now you're now you're chasing on the cap and you're chasing yeah. with free agency and still trying to figure out the draft. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's, I mean, it's it's a difficult look. The general manager is a difficult job because you're going to take all the grief. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and it's, it's it's almost just like a quarterback actually. You know, when you win, it's, they don't even talk about you. When you lose, then it's all about you. Right. So it, it's it's a difficult job, but the reality is they haven't had someone who's done it well, who's done it well, and who knows how long. This mm-hmm. is Tom Coughlin's first run. Yeah. So and and I I think Balky is not as bad as people say he is. But I also think he's missed. He's, he's missed in the draft. There's no doubt about it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and you've got to get it right this go-around uh, beyond the first round, beyond that 17th pick overall. But that's going to be a very important one as well. All right. And we promised NCAA talk. Let's talk tournament. Is there an upset out there? You're talking about a line, Leon, that's around 11, 11 and a half. Bama, the dog, uh, to the UConn Huskies. We know how good they are. They're trying to be the first to repeat uh, since uh, the Gators – uh, as they were able to win it back-to-back years. And so I don't know whether they're going to be able to get the job done or not. Uh, the NC State Wolfpack, about a 10, about a double-digit dog um, on the other side to Purdue. And, you know, we were looking at some stats just a little while ago. Zach Eady, he drives you crazy. He scored 40 on the Tennessee Volunteers. And if you let him operate around the rim and you foul him, you send him to the free throw line, he's going to make more than he misses, uh, and he's going to be a tough, tough guy uh, to negate. Either one of those? Possible I mean, upsets. Well, I mean, we we were just talking about the Matt. We was talking about Burns. We were watching the Burns and the shoot around two with bigs. Uh, two bigs, and we're just trying to figure out. Oh, how one big and one. He's got to be able to get him in, in foul trouble. Uh, I don't know if, if I don't know if he can. That would be optimum. Like, it would be optimum. Get, if you can get a couple quick fouls on Edie, then, then I think they're in a, 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 a they're in a good situation at least in the first half. Now, well, let's, let's now let's, conversely. <laughs> If if DJ gets a couple well, quick fouls because he can't handle Edie, yeah, that's going to be it. And let's yeah, recognize right. uh, DJ Burn doesn't live in the paint very often. No, either. no, let's, he let's, doesn't. Let's, no, yeah, let's no, remember no. that. Oh, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. So, and so it, he's it, also not the, not the you know, look, 
I, I said this last week, his best defense is like grabbing, mm-hmm. waving at guys. Mm-hmm. He's not the best defender. Now, the one thing I do like, and this is a saucy, I think, the one thing I do like about NC State is their ability to score. And Purdue definitely has shot makers on the outside. They got Edie inside. But Duke, when you take a look at what happened to Duke losing to NC State, and I don't think too many people expected it. I think it was a four- or five-point line. Anyway, Duke gave up as many points in the second half to NC State than they gave up in the entire game versus Houston in the regular season. Saucy nugs. That is tremendous for NC State in terms of generating points, what they were able to do in 20 minutes of basketball. They were able to do that to the Duke Blue Devils. So they are physical. They can run, uh, and it's a nine, nine and a half point line, and it does boil down to can they get up and down the court and score in transition, and can they get Edie in foul trouble? Yeah, a lot of their points in that second half, because if you watch the game against Duke, I mean, Duke hadn't even played their best game, but they were still up by five. And I'm saying to myself, okay, Duke hasn't played their best game, and they're going to they're gonna figure out at halftime and come and make adjustments. But I thought North Carolina State, defensively, the way they played defensively against Duke allowed them to transition a lot of those into points. So I, that, that's what I saw. If they, if, they can put, if they can make it a game, see, all the pressure is on. Everybody's expecting the Final Four to be Purdue and, and Connecticut. All right, that that that's where everybody expect. You got to put the pressure on the. You got to put a pressure on those teams in the in the fourth quarter and make it a game. Just don't don't find yourself where you're getting blown out in the second or third quarter. And you're down by mm-hmm. twenty some uh, points. Halves, it's, halves. Yeah, it halves. I mean, yeah. in, in the first half where you're getting blown mm-hmm. out. Just make it a make it a make it a um, make it a game in the second quarter with about four minutes to go and see what happens. Because I mean, both of these teams of all both of these teams are used to. Just running away against their opponents, especially in turn, especially Connecticut. Yeah. So make it a game and see how they respond to it. Because I mean, listen, if Alabama, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to shoot some three. I mean, they've got to shoot. How do you say, twenty threes? Let me just tell you something, bro. I'm not looking past Alabama, man. I'm not looking past Alabama. They can shoot threes, bro. Did you see what Sears did in the? I saw uh, it. I saw they were cutting down the region nets. That dude could not be stopped. Now we watched. uh, What was the guy's name? Golkey. Does that sound right? Golkey from Oakland. Uh, it didn't matter. He was out of, you know, kind of didn't didn't have enough time to square his shoulders up. He just give him the basketball. He lifted and he hit. Sears was in that same kind of mode down the stretch uh, for Bama. That's for sure. You know what? I think I might work in two questions real quick uh, in the NCAA world because once we get past cutting down the nets uh, on on Monday, uh, basketball talk <laughs> will be gone. Well, plus, just like that, there's so much more than Sears too. Mm-hmm. I mean, Sears is an NBA Stevenson player. Stevenson got there's so much more than him. It's Estrada. It's Stevenson. It's Stevenson got Grant Nelson, going. who I think is going to play in the NBA too. Yeah. Um, there's it's Ryan Griffin. They they've got some guys in that team that can stress UConn. Yeah, no doubt. And, about and it. Big Grant, the guy that you yeah. were, you know, that, yeah, yeah, those Grant guys. Nelson, yeah. All right, so let's do this real quick. Uh, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Perfecto. Thank you, RJ. A little perfecto. Fire up the music, put us in a good mood, and see if you can answer this question. I may save the other one uh, for Monday, but I definitely want to ask this question. Uh, when you take a look at what has gone on um, with the way our college basketball world unfolded, we had more chalk than we had Cinderella. The double-digit team was NC State uh, as an 11 coming in uh, to the Sweet 16, and then they were able to make it all the way to the Final Four. I need the last player – uh, to lead the nation in scoring that took his team to the final four. Last player. To lead the nation in scoring. Yep. Brought to you by Pacifico, found in Baja, imported by surfers. For those who live life, anchors up. Danny Manning. Good question. Good guess. That's a good guess. It's going to be one of those funky ones because I got a feeling it's not going to be recent. Last player to lead the nation in scoring mm-hmm. and take his team to a final To a four. final four. So he doesn't mm-hmm. need to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just so take, his, to take his team to a final four. Pacifico, delicious Mexican lager. I'm trying to think of North Carolina now. Maybe. Duke. Anthony Davis? Maybe Duke. I don't think he led the nation in scoring. Oh, okay. All right, real uh, quick. Jason I got, Williams, maybe? I got to read this one real quick before. Um, we head to the break, and I give you the answer. Uh, back to the uh, Tiger question, abstaining uh, for Augusta. <laughs> Costanza learned Portuguese while abstaining from Whoopi. That's an excellent point. He became a bright, bright, bright lad. But while he while he abstained initially, yeah, undefeated. Yeah. Und- All right. Last player to lead the nation in scoring, taking his team to the final four. 
Oscar Robertson. Robertson. See, I knew it was going to be one okay. of those funky ones. We are going way back. You see. Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. Way back, yeah. that's for sure. All right, now speaking of way back, I ain't putting any age on him, but we're going to go in the way back machine. We're going to welcome Dave Campo. <laughs> He's going to come in the 3 o'clock hour and say hello to us. Uh, I'm going to dash off to the PGA Tour uh, international television broadcast uh, that I'm going to get to uh, in, in a good-looking leaderboard uh, as they are at the Valero Texas Open. Uh, but we will send you into the 3 o'clock hour back into – Coach is going to give his thoughts on Stefan Diggs heading yeah, to Houston. Yeah. It's the first time for him to comment on that. We'll be doing all that coming up on XL Primetime. Cruising with XL Primetime in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. There he is. Dan Hickett. Joe Hollywood. Mr. Big Shot. Jeff Prosser. I'm a teacher. All I need are minds for molding. They are the drill. Ah! Mornings on 1010XL. Do we get any sort of souvenir? 15,000 workers. I'm Brian Rose from Remedy Staffing. We survey 15,000 blue-collar workers each year to better understand what drives quality and dependability in our workforce. The survey shows when looking for a new job, the initial pay rate, job security, and safety while working are the most important factors for hourly workers. If you're an employer and would like to learn more about the voice of the blue-collar worker, please call us at 904-528-1933. Attention poker enthusiasts, get ready for unbeatable action at Best Bet with locations in Jacksonville, Orange Park, and St. Augustine. On April 19th and 20th, dive into the excitement with $1,500 high hands every 30 minutes. And save the date for April 27th because it's 24 karat gold day at Best Bet Jacksonville where we're dealing out $24,000 in prizes throughout the day starting at 10 a.m. Want in on the action? Visit bestbetjax.com for all the details. That's bestbetjax.com. David Lane here again for Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. After several surgeries for age-old issues, mainly my back and shoulders, there's no doubt that Southeast Orthopedic Specialist is my sustaining resource for living pain-free. Take it from me, and I'm being really honest here, there's no better orthopedic facility here in Jacksonville. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. The flagship station of the Jacksonville Jaguars. WJXL AM Jacksonville Beach. WJXL FM Jacksonville Beach. When you think about a metal roof, think Prime Roofing. Prime Roofing is Jacksonville's local contractor that manufactures, fabricates, and installs metal roofs. Schedule today at primeroofingfl.com. That's primeroofingfl.com. Catch Gators baseball all season long on 1010XL. Brought to you by Farrah and Farrah, the official personal injury law firm of the Jaguars. And Renewal by Anderson, the official window and door replacement partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let's go! It's time for opening night, and don't you dare miss the Jacksonville Sharks' first home game against the IFL defending champions, the Bay Area Panthers, Saturday, April 6th at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena. Kickoff, 7 o'clock. Let's go! Tickets as low as $15. You can't find Saturday family affordable fun anywhere else. Call 904-621-0700 or go to jacksharks.com. Dust off your boots, grab your cowboy hat for Western Night. Join us at 5 p.m. for Shark Fest, every home game located outside the arena for our pre-game party. Help us rock the tank as we roll out the 2023 NAL Championship Band. Let's go! Don't miss our opening game. It's this Saturday, April 6th, 7 o'clock. Let's show them what Jax is bringing to the table at the Five Star Veterans Memorial Arena. Be a part of indoor football fun and exciting non-stop action. For tickets as low as $15, call 904-621-0700. Don't forget your cowboy hats. Let's go! Let's go! This is your Southeast Orthopedic Specialist local sports update. I'm Andrew Gibson for 1010XL. This update brought to you by Window Gang Jacksonville. Jacksonville native Mac Jones joins the Jaguars quarterback room in 2024 after being acquired via trade from New England. Jones joined Jaguars.com this week and was asked how it feels to be back in his hometown. It feels amazing. First of all, the weather. (laughs) Um, That's definitely something I'm excited about, but just to be back here in the community I grew up in, uh, it's just every kid's dream, and I'm just excited to get, get to work. Check out the full interview with Jaguars quarterback Mac Jones on Jaguars.com. 
It's right now 74 degrees at 3 o'clock. Time and temp brought to you by Bueller Air Conditioning. Stay cooler on this Friday with Bueller. 1010XL is presented by Farrah & Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. XL Primetime's coach Dave Campo is brought to you by Bold City Heating and Air. Online at boldcityac.com. It is heavy metal fries, there's no doubt about it, but Dave has no idea who Deep Purple is, that's number one. Number two, Dave's ent- entry music is completely different than heavy metal music. Let's just say that. I agree. Look at the age. You're talking about <laughs> 76. I'm still well, learning, I'll I mean, figure this out. No offense to Deep Purple, it's just, you know, yeah. you know. It's XL Primetime Hour, number two. Joe's off to do some golf work at Hazley on Thursday. We welcome our coach in Dave Campo. Coach, so we've we've been grinding on this now for two days with this Stefan Diggs to the Texans. I want to get your thoughts on this, but you have something you said you want to lead off your segment with. Yeah, well, I just want to say that some people may get this, some may not. Depends on whether they're listening in the first hour. But let me explain something to you guys, okay? This is what I told my guys. It's never a sacrifice. It's an investment. <laughs> Now, some of the guys said back to me, yeah, but you're 43 years old. It's a little easier for you. <laughs> you're talking about the uh, – Oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The yeah. sacrifice. I can, appre- I can appreciate that, Coach. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, all I'm going to say from that once again is we're going to end it undefeated. All right, so, Dave, <laughs> we, we've we been grinding for two days on, on, on the whole Stephon Diggs thing, and, and, you know, the Texans are literally going all in. I mean, you, you you look at what they've done to Nell Hunter and Autry and Joe Mixon and Diggs. Those are four mega additions in free agency. Um, you can say all you want about the age. Autry's getting up in age, and you know, you know, Joe Mixon's a running back, and he's already five years in. Whatever you want to say about that, they at least have put themselves in position to fight for more than just the division. While fans out there see what the Jags have done, and they're adding guys that of injury history, you know, they're adding guys that I think if you if you set them up against what the Texans are adding, I think this is what people in Jacksonville are a little upset about. It's just not close as far as the talent additions. And, and, and are the Jags serious about, you know, upgrading? Because last year that was an issue off the edge. Everybody was saying edge, 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 and no edge help. And it became an issue. So – your thoughts on the Texans adding Stefan Diggs, and are would the Jags be panicking if they try and go out and pick up Ayuk or T. Higgins? Well, let me let me just say it this way. I would say that uh, the decision making off of a nine and eight team was different with the Texans than it was with the Jaguars. And and when you look back on it, hindsight's twenty twenty. The Jags took a 9-8 and eight team last year and said, we like our team. We, we like our guys. We expect them to get better. And so they didn't do anything. Same situation, by the way. That's what I'm saying. That it, their, the way they their, won the division, their, everything. Their, their yeah. decision was made because of, I'm not going to say loyalty, because it, it, loyalty in the NFL is, is relative. Right. But they but made same, that decision. Same situation. Won a and, playoff game, everything. And looking at hindsight, that was not a good decision, which has forced them to take another nine and eight team with not a lot of capital, draft capital. Yeah. I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, cap cap situation. Right. And do what they had to do to, to give the team an opportunity to get better. And when you do that, you have to take some chances on some guys in free agency with injury concerns. That's number one to me. Mm-hmm. Number two is those guys over there in Houston – took the opposite approach. They looked at a 9-8 and eight team and said, look, we were lucky to be 9-8. and eight. Which is what you were saying about the 2022 team all a- along. Absolutely. Right. I said during the 22, remember now, we could have lost five of those games that we won. Right. And looking at this year, it's the same situation. 
just take – we already had to win one more game, right? Yeah. And, and so, you know, you look at some games and you say, hey, look, if this happened, we win that game, which is always the case in the NFL. But to me, it's a catch-22 with Houston because Houston – has used up probably all of their cap money. I don't know what they're going to have going into next year. So they threw it all in, and that's the decision they made. They've got a young quarterback that looks like he's going to be special, and now uh, we're going to we're going to jump all in and, and take a shot at it. And and whether it's right or wrong, sometimes when you put too many cooks in the kitchen, whether it's on the coaching staff or with the players, sometimes that works out. But you have to look at it from the outside and say, hey, they had some quality guys. And they're, they're saying, we, we, we're not happy with our 9-8 and eight football team. We need to get better. And, and, and that's what they did. Yeah, co- co- I mean. That was it, your problem all along, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, Well, I mean, Coach, it could, it could be also, like, like you said, they have no cap room. They spent up all their money this year. So they're going to be frozen pretty much next year. But it, I, I look at it like it's a situation where they listen. They figured out last year, okay, we got our guy. C.J. Strauss, our guy. He's right, our franchise right. guy. We know that we've got a two- to three-year window before we've got to pay him a $300, $350 million. So let's just go all in on this kid right now. Let's put all the pieces around him right now and see if we can win the chip before we have to disassemble all of this stuff once we Absolutely. pay Absolutely. You hit it. That's hitting right, it that's, right on and the that's head. The window, and that's why right. I thought we made a mistake last year. And not doing it because we still had two years with Trevor Lawrence, and mm-hmm. and before you had to, before you had to start talking about money, him and Cisco and yeah, Campbell, yeah. well, and yeah, guys you that you have to sign yeah. exactly. So, you know, I'm concerned, but I I do agree with Leon in one sense. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we should panic because that football team last year. What I don't know what we did the last five or six weeks. There was something wrong. Mm-hmm. If you get that righted and I think they brought some guys in that give them an opportunity to do that with I'm talking about uh character and and mm-hmm. locker room and and experience and all those things if we get that right we're going to be all right because that football team last year for them wasn't any better than our football team was a year ago mm-hmm. we didn't finish they did and that's the difference between the two so you know they can you can look at digs and you can say oh my goodness it's over well, it's not over. I'm actually excited about what they've done in a way because our our team should panic. When I say panic, not panic, but look at themselves and say, hey, oh, wait a minute. We better get our stuff going if we're going to have a shot to go after this. And I think the tougher the division is, the better chance you have to be battle-tested and come out of it. Okay, so then, then let's look at it this way then. Would you be okay with them making a move to go get Ayuk or go get T. Higgins? If they think that that's going to be a, a big difference, they did it with uh, Ridley in a different, in a different way, uh, and, and it didn't work out. That's my point. That's, I think, Leon's point as far as digs. Will it work out? You don't know. I mean, you know, who knows? Uh, right, it, but I don't know that I don't know that you could blame Ridley for them not making the playoffs last year. No, I think no, there was a lot no, more no, going on. No, no, I, I, to me, if they can fit it underneath everything, I'd go after them absolutely because when you get a guy that's young enough and ascending, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's young enough that he can uh, make the rise. Uh, you're probably better off with him than you are Diggs if you really want to look at it. Oh, I think they definitely would be. Yeah, I also just think by age and you. And, let me ask you this. As a former coach, how do you weigh that? How do you weigh, okay, we've got an ascending player who's proven himself in the league, but he's going to cost us. Not only going to cost us this year, but if we want to keep him, it's going to cost a lot of money, yeah. as opposed to if you hit at 17 on a receiver, let's say Brian Thomas, who is a, definitely a buster boom guy, if you hit at 17, then you got a guy for four years at, at a low salary and a guy who could be a very good player. Yep. So how do you how do you balance that? I, really, I I just think it, it depends on whether you think that particular guy coming in this year gives us a chance to win the division and get into the playoffs right. and and get it. That's the bottom line because anytime you bring a young receiver in, just like any position, it's subjective. You've seen this guy play, you know he he shouldn't regress, you know he should progress, right? You know mm-hmm. and and so. That's how I would compare the two of them is just from the standpoint of 
you know, where, where do you see him in relationship to what your team is? And, you know, another thing that kind of bothers me a little bit is when Leon just said they've got their guy, I'm not sure our guys think we're 100% got our guy. And that as makes a difference Trevor, on whether yeah. you throw everything in there too. You so know you what? mean like you, you know management or the or the or the team or both? The, I'm just talking about the, the is the quarterback the guy? Are we going to let everything rip here, like you said before we have to pay everybody? Right. Let's mm-hmm. get the guys in there. Now my background was the draft. You heard me talk about yeah. the cowboy drafts that we had. We're going to get into that. But th- th- to me, you 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 build a team for the future. But we were building a team from scratch, you know, one in fifteen. Well, so are they, so are so are we, the right. Jaguars. The Jaguars, right? You know, so uh, uh, we have not had a good uh, uh, check off on our on our draft. But I want to circle back real quick. So, yeah. so you think there might be people in that management that they may think we may not be the guy at quarterback. He may not be the guy. Well, I, personally, from experience, this is the time to sign Trevor right if he's the guy right right now mm-hmm. you know don't let him go next year and take him about four rounds <laughs> because then it's going to cost you about three times what it's going to it's cost typically you what you do in the NFL is what yeah, you're absolutely yes. that's what all I'm saying is you know there's a reason there they have reasons that I have no idea about right when I look at Trevor and I have no doubt in my mind that he just has to clean some stuff up, and he's going to be a, a really good player in the league, just right. like you do. And yeah, I think the everybody same thing. Does. I think the same thing. That's what I think. But when you're talking about $55 million a year over whatever contract it is, you're, you're, you're going to get rid investment. of some guys because of that. <laughs> you know, that's the problem. And that's why when you look at the Houston Texans, you have to give them credit that they're, they're, uh, you know, they're rolling the dice on good players when it, when it's not going to really cost them. Well, see, they they were able to do they were able to process this a lot earlier than we could because we had Urban Meyer. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We had Urban Meyer. A blown year for Trevor. You know, so that was a blown year. You, the, the Houston Texans had the luxury of saying, okay, this is going to be our starter. And he's played well, so listen. You know what? We know he's our franchise guy. We know in two or three years we have to pay this guy. So let's go all in on him. Let's give him the weapons. Let's give him what he needs to flourish, and let's make a run at this thing. We had Urban Meyer the first year, uh, we, we so our process and the Texas process is is a year and a half apart. To be quite honest with you, they yes, had a, a right. year and a half jump on it because they were able to get it right then and now. Their first off season with C.J. Stroud, they're making moves, they're maneuvering and making moves to help this kid flourish in the NFL, and not just the division, right, but the AFC. I, they, they, you don't make moves like that just, just to win the division. You make no. moves like this to be competitive against the, the Kraken. I call them the Kraken. That's the cheese. <laughs> <that's the G's. laughs> but I mean, but let's, I mean, let's be honest here. We need to be intellectually honest here. They knew what they had at the end of last season at twenty two. So you could have gone all in in twenty two. Yeah. True. Yeah. Correct. And, and their all in move what, was was Calvin Ridley. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you know what was the sentiment uh, last year well, when, when we going into the season where everybody was begging them to get a uh, another another pass rusher. The sentiment was, "What we like our locker room. We're good. Trayvon is developing well." Yeah, that that was the sentiment. Yeah, right. and everybody was like, "We need some other pieces." And, yeah. and we were begging for them to go out and get your, your guy, a hunter. You know what? Yeah, Danelle yeah, Hunter. Danelle well, Hunter. well, it wasn't just the end either. I mean, they started last year with a with a left guard that was coming back from a major knee surgery and thought it was going to be fine. Yeah. So there are other positions that they knew they were they were shaky at nickel. Mm-hmm. They knew yep. that Darius Williams was not a man cover guy. Yep. So if you're that invested in, in your quarterback, this was my point all along. Is everyone saying, "Oh, the window's large." You know, Trevor's young. No, it's not. They're literally in a two-year window there, yeah, starting from, I, I'm from 2022. I think we all are going to look at it uh, at not being in the building. We're all going to look at it the same way. Mm-hmm. I, I look at it and I say they made a mistake, but it's hindsight. It's 2020. They made a decision based on what they thought they had. Uh, and, and, and really, to be honest with you, I thought, in other words, I didn't, I thought for sure they were going to make the playoffs. I didn't know that whether or not they could go all the way to the Super Bowl last year because I said they were a 9-8 and eight team the year before. It's not like 
I looked at it like like the Cowboys back in the day. Right. One and fifteen, seven and nine, eleven and five, Super Bowl. Right. You know, so I, I'm looking at it. It's another year of growth. Do do what you need to do in the draft and do whatever. I thought bringing Ridley in was going to just like we're talking about Diggs and these other guys. I thought that was going to get them to the division game, you know, to maybe to the championship game. Because I thought, hey, these guys are going to develop a little bit. Now we got a receiver that can, you know, he's going to be a little green, but he's going to be a difference maker. And so, to me, uh, they, they probably should have gone, done what the Texans did. At the but, end of 22. they didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, at the end, at the of, end 22. of 22. Yep. All right, so – you came in, you were talking about the Cowboys draft, and I want mm-hmm. to talk about this because we hit this earlier in the show in the first hour. We were talking about if you look at the way this franchise has drafted, clearly it's not good, okay? You had one starter from last year after the first round. One. It's, it's yes. Anton Harrison, right. all right? Now, you came in and said, look, I want, to th- I want to explain to you guys about the Cowboy draft. So when you guys got there, people have to understand that was akin to what the Jaguars were, 1-15. Right. When, when Urban Meyer arrived. So right. it's very similar situations. Um, you guys also got a huge benefit of trading Herschel Walker and just fleecing the Vikings for it. But still, Correct. you have to hit on those picks. Right. So go over those go over those those picks and explain to us the thought process of what happened, of, of what you guys were looking at within that within that time frame. Well, first of all, we knew we didn't have enough speed. We were 1-15. So we the first thing we were going to do was – that first year was get guys that number one were smart, and number two we're had fast. speed. You know, it's funny because that's what Urban Meyer was saying all yeah. along. Yeah, and and that's he got probably got that from Jimmy because right. they met before you know during that's the, right. that period that's right. of time. Get smart guys that can run. You know, speed is is the key in this league. You can say whatever you want at every position, and so that was our start. And then the first four guys we drafted, we hit on. Okay, so that's great. And, and the difference was, in my mind, we knew what the football team needed to look like. Mm-hmm. When we came in from Miami, we felt we needed Miami at the Dallas Cowboys. Right. You know, we did increase the speed. We had to get young, and we had to, you know, it, it, that's how we started. The next year, we didn't have very many draft picks, and, and we got Emmitt Smith, though. And so you add Emmitt Smith to the, to the rest of the guys that we hit on. That first year, we got the starting center. We got the starting fullback. Uh, we got Troy Aikman. We got, and really, Troy Aikman was picked before we got there. For you the know, most he was part, already, right, essentially, right. Yeah, he was he was already uh, being dealt with when we got there, mm-hmm. and so that was the first year because he was the obvious first. He was overall. the obvious guy, right. right, right. But Jimmy didn't stand pat with him. What Jimmy did was in the supplemental draft that year, he took Steve, Steve Walsh, Walsh from Miami, who we had at the University of Miami. And now he dealt him for a couple of number ones, you know, at a later date. So, you know, that that was part of it. And and I think that's Jimmy Johnson. Don't listen to this, Jerry. But that's Jimmy <laughs> Johnson making those decisions uh, and, and what we're going to do. The second year, we got a couple guys. But the third year was after the Herschel Walker's trade. But not only that, but we had Plan B free agency. So we supplemented our draft picks with what Houston is trying to do by bringing in those veteran guys, thing, and we're right. trying to do it. Except they're going with the, a little bit more uh, mm-hmm. because of their cap situation. They're able to go out and get a few more guys. That third year, uh, we hit. We had three threes, we had a two, and then we had four three uh, three, ones, three ones. I'm sorry, right. a two. Three threes, four fours, and we hit on the majority of those picks. And then we hit on Eric Williams as a as a fifth, and we hit on Leon Lett Let as a seventh, and we hit on uh, Larry Brown as a twelfth. So we that was a great draft. That's how you went three Super Bowls right, in four years. Exactly, but we also added four starters in Plan B: Jay Novacek, James Washington, Thomas Everett. Uh, you know, some starting players. Good players, but not like huge, in, no. impactful players. Right, right exactly. Right. And then we took one guy that's kind of like the guys they're trying to bring in. We got Charles Haley. And so 
everything fit right. And I'm not saying that we had to do that. But I just look at it like you guys do in a lot of ways. We should have gone a little bit more all in. And and we don't know what that who made that decision. You know, we don't know if it was it was uh Doug or whether it was Trent. Who or knows if, who or made if that decision? was part of this conversation who, who too. Knows? Who knows, right? Yeah, exactly. So because exactly. if you're if you're trying to go all in, it means you're gonna have to restructure contacts yeah. contracts, which means you're gonna have to give guys cash. Yeah. And you're asking yeah, your owner to get to, I've heard you say that to a come lot. by with and, a lot of cash. Believe right? me, I don't pay attention to much with numbers, but I, you're right. Right, but I can guarantee <laughs> that Shad pays attention to numbers, even exactly. though in the history he's paid, he spent as much or anyone in free agency over and the last couple of years. I think he wants to win. I'll yeah, say I, that. I don't, I don't disagree. All right, we need, we need to go to a break here. We're going to come back and get into more of this at the draft and and the Jags and the Texans. It's, it's a lot going on. We even get, we even talk to you a little bit about the Final Four too. We get a quick little thought too Ooh, about yeah. that too. I like it. That's going to be a seven, good one. I seven think. four guys, Zach Eaton. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Well, All right. They're we'll still going to be seven and four. You know. Right. That's what I keep saying. <laughs> Guess what? On Saturday he's going to be seven foot four, and on Monday in the championship game he he's still going to be seven four, four and three twenty. So deal with him. All right. It's XL Prime Time. You're riding in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios. XL Prime Time on Ten Ten XL. She's spunky, aggressive, opinionated, and she knows how to keep the boys in line. It's good to see you, too. Mia O'Brien, noon to two on 1010XL. You've probably heard the saying, it's not how hard you get hit, it's whether or not you get back up. Well, I'm attorney Brett Hastings, and I have a saying of my own. If you get hit with a personal injury or wrongful death, Hit back and fight to make them pay. At Hastings Injury Law, we have the experience you want if you or a loved one suffer a car or trucking accident or wrongful death. Just call 904 Hit Back and we'll help you get up and hit back. Office is Jacksonville. Frank Frangie here for South State Bank. Look, I depend on South State for so many things personal accounts, small business banking, and banking for our nonprofit. South State Bank can help you reach all your financial goals, too, whether you're just starting out or focused on financial planning. South State offers convenience with their online and mobile banking. You should check out South State Bank as they were recently recognized by Forbes as one of America's best banks. That's South State Banking Forward, member FDIC, equal housing lender. QC Kinetics announces the arrival of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup, an acclaimed orthopedic surgeon with two decades of experience and extensive research in regenerative medicine. But I was one of the first orthopedic surgeons to do it, and at the same time, I integrated clinical research that's resulted in several publications that are really directing the future of regenerative medicine. I was drawn to QC Kinetics after I reviewed their protocols, and everything they were doing is consistent with my own approach. Today, Dr. Scheinkup leads the entire team of medical professionals at QC Kinetics, taking this exciting medical breakthrough to a whole new level. What we are doing at QC Kinetics is transforming lives. Get lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. This is the future of medicine. Call QC Kinetics, 904-274-5522. That's 904-274-5522. 904-274-5522. Jeff Prosser, mornings on 1010XL, 92.5 FM. How's Wingstop sound? Crispy, juicy, classic wings. Made to order, cooked to perfection, and sauced and tossed in those 11 soul-satisfying flavors. Paired with hand-cut seasoned fries, house-made honey mustard, blue cheese, or signature Wingstop ranch. And, of course, spicy Cajun fried corn. I think you've heard enough. Get your flavor delivered at wingstop.com. Baloo here for Smunez Vision. Why Smunez Vision? Well, I've been with Dr. Neil Smunez now since I got back to Jacksonville in 2006. 37 years of experience he has. Smunez Vision is a family organization that focuses on personal high-quality medical and surgical eye care. Dr. Catherine Smunez is fellowship-trained in cornea and cataract surgery and all refractive surgery. Combined, that's 30 years plus in laser eye surgery. Visit smunezvision.com today. Care you can see. Mia here, and let me tell you about one of our area's best resorts, the Sawgrass Marriott Golf Resort and Spa. The Sawgrass Marriott is not only a great destination for a vacation, but it is also a great destination for dining on the Florida's first coast. 
1912 Ocean Bar and Rooftop is now open on Ponte Vedra Boulevard, featuring Ponte Vedra's only oceanfront rooftop bar and lounge. Serving finely crafted cocktails and delectable eats, it's open daily from 4 to 10 with complimentary valet parking. It's the Guggen Open. I gotta learn how to play golf. For a chance for you and a partner to play in this year's Coastal Equipment Guggen Golf Open, April 15th at Hidden Hills Golf Club. Listen to Dan and Jeff on the drill. Enjoy a Chick-fil-A breakfast and a dandy foods lunch. Put the ball in a hole. Score a hole-in-one, and you could win $500 cash from Lucas Honda. Yeah! You could also win a Bernie Grill from Stonecore. Pictures from Jack Sports Photography. Thanks to our sponsors, Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, Ahead, and Ackerman Urology. Mark Watson with Hardball Creative. I know that hearing another ad for Jacksonville's best promo company interrupts Jacksonville's best sports talk, but at least it isn't a political ad. Check us out at hardballcreative.com. Hardball Creative. Hardball does it all. For any urological concerns, let Ackerman Urology be your trusted partner in men's health. With offices from Amelia Island to Roll Golf Village, they treat bladder conditions, elevated PSAs, and ED. Visit AckermanUrology.com. Tone 10XL is presented by Farrah and Farrah, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. Big Hair Heavy Metal Friday on XL Primetime. Now we're talking, RJ. Now, now we've got a little music for Dave Campo. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's XL Primetime. A couple segments to go. It's a Friday. Heavy Metal Friday. But we've got Dave here, so we've got a little Jackson Brown. Nothing wrong with a little Jackson Brown. All right. So here's another thing we spoke about earlier in the week in relation to the Texans and their moves. Did the moves by the Texans, and I'm—I I mean, Diggs just kind of caps it all off, and I think Diggs was such a big name, every kind of like shocked everybody, you know. So, when really it should have been like Danell Hunter and, and Autry, and the guys that are going to be, you know, you got Danell Hunter and Will Anderson on the edge. My God, you, you're going to you're going to cause some problems. All right, so so the idea that they topped it all off with Stephon Diggs, and now you've got three legit dudes at wide receiver for the Texans. If Tank Dell comes back from ACL and just no expectation to think he wouldn't, okay? you got Collins, Dell, and Stephon Diggs and one of the hottest quarterbacks in the league right now. Does that change the way you think at 17 overall? Do you think now, man, we, you got to score points? Or do you think you got to get a corner because you got to cover these guys? Yeah. I First of all, I don't think it changes your thinking. I think that at this point in time, they've got this narrowed down where they're where they're looking, what they think is important for this football team. And and I'm a big proponent of a couple things. Number one, I, I believe that you don't worry about who the other guy has. You worry about who you have. Right. Okay? And we got to make sure we've got guys that we can develop and, and, and that our guys play. So it goes hand in hand. In other words, if they've got a great receiver, you'd like to have somebody that can cover them. The thing is, though, even the great corners that I know, and I'm talking about Deion Sanders and guys like that, they really never covered the number one receiver. They always covered the number two receiver, and you doubled up the number one receiver. Right, right. So I think you can hide corners. That's my. That's why I wouldn't just jump up and say, oh, we got to take this guy because he's got to cover mm-hmm. digs, mm-hmm. okay? I'm still of the mindset that the quarterback is the key to this whole thing for us, okay? So protect him. Protect him. Make sure if there's a tackle out there that you can count on for 10 years, I'm still of the mindset you take the tackle. Even though you've got three right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think the guy that we need some guys. When I look at these tackles that are on the board coming in here, you know, all – I've got three of them. I think one of those might be there at the at 17. Okay. A beast, tough, physical, uh, exciting, you know, energy. Maybe a guy that could play inside for yeah, a year. Yeah, and he might go inside. So, right. to me, I am I would still lean towards that. But if that's You're talking the dirty case, to me. You know that, I right? don't think Because I've been saying guard, guard all along. Yeah, I don't think they're going to take him. I don't think that's going to happen. So now when you're looking at the other two, to me it will come down to which 
I, do we have a chance to get the second corner? And we have him graded better than the third receiver? Then I'm taking the corner. If, but if they're graded the same, I'm my I lean towards taking the guy that can score points for you. Now because, I think because we, of how the league is, it's a scoring league now. Absolutely. So, to me, it's going to come down to where who ends up there at 17 and where you have guys graded, and that I don't know. I know that Thomas, for example, if he's there at the four at 17, 17. he's a pretty good player. But I know that Terry and Arnold and Kenyon Mitchell are pretty good players as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So, Dave, you said an interesting thing. And, Leon, you've talked about this many times, and I want to get your thoughts on it again, is is when you're with the Steelers, like Dave said, you don't, don't worry about what someone else has. You worry about developing your own guys. That's why you said the Steelers were so good, because you guys just developed your dudes. Even when yeah. you left, they just kept getting – more receivers for Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, I mean, you also got to remember too when when I was at the Steelers, the free agency was new. It it, it was relatively right. new. It had only been around what, coach, maybe a year or maybe well, two years. Well, it was nineteen ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. So free agency was was new. And that was limited. Free exactly. Agency. So you ever drafted or you died? Is basically what it was. Basically, you 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 either drafted or you died. And the Steelers did an outstanding job. They didn't believe in bringing a lot of free agents. They developed their their rookie core, because I, I remember my, in 92, I came in, there was me, first round, LeVon Kirkland, second round, Joel Steed, third round, yeah. all starters. I was going to say starters. And then, starters, then starters. the next year, there was the wide receiver, Charles Johnson, first round. Then you had Chad Brown, starter. You had Brinson Buckner, starter. I mean, so, I mean, so right away, within those two years, back to back, you had seven starters. Yeah. On, on the on the offense and the defense side of the ball, and they were developed. And it, they were developed, and, and that's the reason why we were able to go my first year twelve and four, ten and six, twelve and four, eleven and five. Right. You know, were virtually you had a nice mixture of, of young and old, but you had young starters. And I, I like what Coach was saying about the seventeen pick, the offensive tackle. You got to understand. If he's tough, he's mean and nasty. What's the, what's the one thing that we said about this offensive line last yeah, year? Like soft. That. They were yeah. soft. They weren't physical. They weren't tough. They weren't mean. You bring in an attitude adjuster. You bring in somebody who's tough and mean and physical, and you put him on that. And this is one thing you don't want him to do is get corrupted by the veterans. Because, you know, I always told you that story. I told <laughs> Coach, I told him this story. I, I don't know if you listened to it. I told him this story when I came in to, 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 for the Steelers my rookie year, right? So, you know, first of all, I'm a, I'm a hurricane through and through. You're not just going to tell me what to do. So we had to run gassers, Coach, right? We had to run gassers. And I'm running the gassers, and I'm I'm out running the veterans, all right? Oh, yeah. So the I, veterans, I, I, so I'm out running the veterans, <clears throat> you know, and the veterans in the locker room tell me, hey, look, Rook, you need to slow it down. You're making this look bad. And I said, okay, cool. So the next day we run gassers, all right? They blow the whistle for the offensive line go. Coach Kyle said, Leon, why don't you run? I said, Coach, I'm going to give him a head start. They say I run too fast. So I'm gonna let them get ahead of me, and they, and you know what? The only veteran that didn't say anything about you know my attitude was the one that's wearing the gold jacket, the yeah. Bonnie Dawson. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, the only one. So I'm saying that when you bring in a guy like that who's tough and mean and physical, let him be tough, mean and physical, because it it can be contagious. Right. I guarantee you, coach. I guarantee you this, and coach, I I wasn't even in that locker room. I know E Dub Eric Williams. Yes. Is tough, mean, and nasty. Yeah. Right. And I guarantee you, when he stepped. In that locker room and on that field, he was tough, mean, and nasty. And I bet you everybody on the offense loved him for it. Well, and, every, and everybody on that offensive and, line, and, and, Gogan, and you talk, Stepnowski. And all those guys were all pros. Yeah. All those, yeah. guys, those guys were all pros. Nate so when they, went and got, when, they got, when they got E-Dub in the fifth round and he came with that attitude, tough, mean, and nasty, getting after and all yeah. that kind of stuff, I bet you they loved him for it. Yeah. See, that, that's the thing is, you know, we started this process out months ago and we were all saying you got to get tough. We need mean dudes on the offensive line. And then all of a sudden something happens in free agency, and now it's now it's panic a little bit. Yeah, you start looking at all these guys, and you say, wait a minute, he got this guy, he got that. That's what you can't do. You you have to have a plan. But it's hard to not do that, No, right? I, absolutely. But, but you have to have a plan. They made the decision. Let's say uh, Diggs never went there. Right. They made the decision that this receiver core that we have right now with – Gabe Davis and and uh, uh, Kirk Kirk and and Zay Jones uh, Zay and Ingram, we're good enough to move the football and win. That's why I say make sure the quarterback is protected. 
and let those guys operate. And it go back to 2022, we were pretty good offensively. So I think we got to, you know, to me, it depends on where they have these guys graded. It's all, it's right. hard for us we, to even say who they're going to take at 17. We, but. we can't worry about how they cut their lawn and water their grass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't worry about how they cut their lawn and water their grass. I get it. Right? I, I exactly. get all of that. But it's very difficult to not see how these guys are adding pieces mm-hmm. and not yeah. think, all right, well, but, that's going to be an issue for this team. But that's it. That's what you're saying. You're not talking about one guy. In other words, when you say we're going to get ready to, to play against the Kansas City Chiefs, we're not getting ready to play against one guy, even though Mahomes is good. They got other guys. You're getting ready to play against that team, right, to, get, to right. give you a chance to go get it, right? Right. There's other reasons that you take. Well, that's – if you take a tackle, you're, you're not worrying that they got digs. You're worrying about we got to protect the quarterback to beat that team because they are going to score points – you know, that's how we have to win. We've got to win by being a better team than they are. Well, you know my mantra, man. Protect the quarterback, affect the quarterback. Absolutely. So that's, 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 I mean, that's how you win in, in the NFL. It's how you win in big-time football, be it the NFL, be it college football. Protect Absolutely. And, and you can't let a guy like Trevor Lawrence, He's he. it's his responsibility to get himself right. And and I think he's got the, uh, he, I think he's got the makeup to do it. It's – their responsibility to make sure he has an opportunity to get himself right. Mm-hmm. That's my feeling. So they, if, as an offensive lineman, Leon, coming into this season for those five guys, to Coach's point, they've got to be in a situation where we've got to pr- give him the best situation possible to where he can develop. Like they've got – that's got to be something they're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, listen, if you're, if you're honest with yourself, I always – I told – I told you this, every offseason when I play, I said, are you the problem? Don't let you be the problem. You know, whatever you whatever you struggle with, in, in, the, in the, be honest with yourself and fix it. Because I, I, you got to keep getting better. You can't, you not, in, the, in this league, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. You're getting, yeah. as there is no middle ground. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. Every offseason, you got to learn. You got to put little things in your arsenal, whatever it yeah, may be. It is. You got to put little things in your arsenal. I would watch. I reason. I would watch film on different guys. You know, great offensive linemen that were playing or whatever. Right. And I would. I would say, okay, okay. I like that set. I like the way he uses it. I would. I would go and pick and choose of what I would be working on to get better and use it in my arsenal. And guys would do. Uh, we had Willie Anson on, on here a couple times. He said that he used to watch film on me and pick right. up on stuff that I did and put it in his arsenal. I mean, it, it's. You know, it's not like stealing jokes. It's not, it's not like stealing jokes. No, I jokes. get it. Like, I get it. From my- it's just that you, you're you taking what certain guys do well, and then you work it and you perfect it and you, you put it in your arsenal. And you, if you do it enough times, repair, then when you get out on the field, it's automatic. We did so, that as homework. Yeah. We did that as homework. Mm-hmm. We, we would uh, – I would break down corners, and I'd say, okay, uh, I'd get uh, Larry Brown in there and say, hey, look. I want you to watch these three guys. Mm -hmm. And you come back and tell me something that they do that could improve your game. That was part of what we did all the time. So let let me just say this real quick, though. And this is the problem I think I have is is there's this narrative now, and it's a narrative because, I mean, Doug Peterson talked about it at at the owners' meetings. There's a cut from him. We probably still have it. Is, you know, the injuries, the injuries on the offensive line. They only have the same offensive line one time, the five guys they have now, one time the last game of the season. Are you giving those guys an excuse with those injuries? You, you should. They don't get a pass for that. No. Like, see, I feel like that's what's going no, on no, right no, there. No, no, yeah, they can't get look at that a little bit. I mean, no. I mean, yeah. I'm saying I'm agreeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't look like that. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so that, like, if you're a player, it's a little easy for you to not look at yourself in the mirror if you keep I hearing that. I hope not, because yeah. they were awful, yeah. especially down the stretch. They yeah. weren't tough, no physical. They weren't. You just got to be honest. You got to call. You know. Uh, here's gotta, my other. Here's my other question: Is when we're talking about this draft situation at 17, was there a offensive tackle in free agency this year that would make us a lot better? Right. Mm-hmm. And, and there probably wasn't. That's why Cam Robinson is still sitting here because Cam Robinson brings some of that what mm-hmm. you're talking about, right? Yeah. Well, then that's even more reason for me to go get me a tackle out of the draft because you're not going to find them in free agency. The good ones, they're going to keep. Yeah. They're not going to let the good ones out. Mm-mm. 
you better get the big lineman that can run out of the draft. All right, let's let's. Opinion. I want to hear Doug. I want to hear. Look, to me, this is an excuse. I know you hate when I use that word, Dave, but to me, this is an excuse for that offensive line. Play it, RJ. The offensive line, I, you know, Cam missed eight games, right? You know, um, our left guard was a revolving door, you know, um, early in the season. And if you look at it, week 18 was kind of the snapshot of the offensive line, what it was supposed to look like with Cam, Ezra, Luke, Brandon, and Anton. That was supposed to be the original, you know, not the original five to start the season, but when we we got Ezra, that was supposed to be what it looked like. So they only played one game together. So we're excited for this this upcoming offseason to get those guys working together. See, and the problem I have with that, it, number one, it sounds like an excuse, and I know you hate when I use that word, but number two is, you know, he's pointing to a game where they played terrible, Dave, on the offensive line. And again, you can make the excuse of, well, it was only it was their first game together, and you know they didn't know each other, and they didn't know their little idiosyncrasies. Well, and it's- well, well for, first and foremost, there there is a rarity that an offensive line starting five, the beginning of the plays season, whole season it right. plays a whole season, right? Again. All right, so you, you more than likely you you got you got seven to eight guys you can depend on throughout the season. You know, you got you got rotational guys that can play center or guard, and then you got guards that can play tackle. You know, so you got a good eight, seven to eight rotation. It's never going to be the same. But so, so what? What you're saying? What I'm saying? I'm saying this that everybody collectively, offensive line wise, those eight are responsible for the stability of the offense. You, you, you those guys behind me have to prepare like I, like they're going to start the next have game. to. So, because so, so it can't be any excuses. Right. Can't be any excuses for this guy not being here. Right. This guy, this guy got injured. No, right. Right. Because any offensive line coach will tell you. He would get on the guys behind us even more than the starters because he knows that it's a long season and he knows that those guys behind are going to be leaned on. And he knows that when their name is called, he knows that they better perform at the same level in which we're performing. Bro, I'm so glad you said that, man. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I'm so glad he said that because yeah. that's – it's to me it just seems like, all right, well, we didn't have our five in there. We only had a five for one game. Yeah. Yeah, here, here's, here's how I look at that, right? Remember, what a, a, a head coach says to the media is different than what he says True. in the no locker doubt. room. No doubt. Okay? No doubt. I don't know what else he was supposed to say because if he comes out and says, they, he did say, well, Trent said we got to be more physical and more, you know, whatever. You gotta, you so that was Trent already credit. out there. You got to give him credit. He's yeah, like the only one that's really said It's that. out there, right? right? But as the head coach – if he came out and said, we weren't worth a darn, we stunk up the place, then he's really in trouble because when they don't go out and get anybody, <laughs> then right. he looks bad. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what he says there is, and there is something, which Leon would agree with, I know, that there is something to continuity in the offensive line that's very, very important. Mm-hmm. You know, right. in other words, if the, the better offensive lines in the leagues are the ones that have played together and, yep. and gone. So my feeling is it can be looked at as an excuse. I don't know what else he w- could have said, actually. Right. And hopefully he, w- he with his football team, have said, hey, guys, we're not going to get it done unless you guys pick it up. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, and, 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 and to get be, it done. Right. And to I be mean, fair, I, I, I understand that. He, there's only so <laughs> much he can say publicly. I get that because then you don't, he doesn't want to – he doesn't want to be in a situation where he's going to lose the locker room because he said something negative and Absolutely. the players don't feel like he's got his back. I get all that. I get it. Yeah. All right. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about this 17 pick in relation to our little feature we got going on, 17 days of se- of the number 17 pick. We are on day three now, I believe. It'll be the 17 pick of the 2009 draft. We'll go over that, and we'll dig a little bit deeper in this idea that maybe it's big and beefy and nasty at 17 after all. It's XL Primetime. The First Coast Honda Dealer Studios on 1010XL. First of all, congratulations on the show. Join the 1010XL Podcast Network. How do you like being in a real studio? Now you can find all your favorite 1010XL podcasts in your platform of choice. Nimnik Chevrolet is Northeast Florida's Silverado truck headquarters. Frank Frangie here. With new shipments arriving daily, Nimnik Chevrolet has the best selection of Silverado trucks on the ground in town. Nimnik Chevrolet is conveniently located on the corner of Park and Cassett Avenue or online at NimnikChevy.com. Nimnik Chevrolet is family-owned and operated. 
No one cares more about their customers before and after the sale. That's Nimnik, your friends in the car business since 1941. Chevrolet, together let's drive. The smart way to treat your floors. It's time to make the swap. Swiffer Power Mop. Introducing the new Swiffer Power Mop. The all-in-one tool that gives you a mop and bucket clean in half the time. The solution's built right in, so no heavy bucket. And the pad has hundreds of scrubbing strips to get deep into grout. Don't mop harder, mop smarter. Swift for power mop, swift for power mop. Do you have clipping, popping, swelling, or pain in your knee or shoulder? This can be due to arthritic changes in your joints. Over time, you have wear and tear of your cartilage. I am Dr. George Bari, and here at Bari Orthopedics, we have numerous ways to treat your arthritis, such as regenerative medicine, including PRP and joint replacements with CT guidance for accuracy down to the millimeter. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, call us for an appointment today or log on to bariorthopedics.com. Find out more at bariorthopedics.com. That's B-A-H-R-I orthopedics.com. Are you 18 years or older, just got married, just got divorced, or have children? Listen up. Have you done your last will and estate planning? If you have questions, call Matt Hinson with the Hinson Law Firm. Reach him at 527-1700, offices Jacksonville, Florida. And don't let the state decide your fate. It's back, the biggest jewelry sale of the year. Buy one, get one at Beard's Diamonds. No other jewelry store in North Florida can match it. Buy any band and get the other one free. The whole month of April. Beard's Diamonds will beat any competitor's price. At the St. John's Town Center. There are three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and if you stay in your home long enough, a new roof. Pick it here for our friends at Lockhart Roofing. Nobody better in Jacksonville. How do I know? They are a local certified master elite contractor. And that means they have a GAF Master Elite warranty. That's the best in the roofing industry. In this day and age, don't settle for cheaper discount roofers. Lockhart Roofing has been here for decades. They aren't going anywhere. Call my friends at Lockhart Roofing, 994-3851. That's 994-3851. Lockhart Roofing, Jacksonville's best for Jacksonville people. This state in sports history is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. On April 5th, 1959, at the 23rd Masters Tournament, Art Wall Jr. wins his only PGA Tour major victory, one stroke ahead of Gary Middlecoff. Doc Doc Rooter is a full-service plumbing company that's locally owned and operated, fully licensed and insured. We'll be at your home in a timely manner, provide honest pricing, and ensure the job is completed correctly or we'll make it right. Doc Doc Rooter can handle all plumbing jobs, including repairing broken pipes, clearing clogged drains, to installing new fixtures, water heaters, garbage disposals, and full repipes for older homes. If you're stuck, call the Doc, 904-862-6769. That's 904-862-6769. Winter time at the Blue Crab Crab House. You know what that means. Time for oysters. Buy them by the tray, broiled, half shell with Romano cheese, wine topping, or fried. And of course, each and every Wednesday, $1 oysters at the Blue Crab Crab House. Serving Northeast Florida since 1996. Make reservations by calling 260-CRAB. Jacksonville's best, the Blue Crab Crab House, off of San Jose on Jewington Creek Road. Mortgage rates have lowered going into this spring selling season. Have you had problems selling your home in the past? Are you looking for a promise, a solution? I'm here to give it for you. It's Chad and Sandy and chadandsandy.com, the real estate experts I trust and recommend with the sale of your home or mine for that matter. Maybe you want maximum equity or perhaps you're worried about costly repairs or upgrades. Chad and Sandy deliver this simple promise. They guarantee your home sold at an agreed upon price and deadline or they will buy it. You have literally nothing to lose. Take Pete in Lakeshore. I was in a pickle. I heard Chad and Sandy on the radio and called because I needed to cash out on a rental property fast. I was struggling to rent it. I called Chad and Sandy, and I got an offer for full asking price within days. These guys made it easy and delivered big time results. Call the agents. I trust and recommend to sell your home. Chad and Sandy, they guarantee to sell your home or they will buy it. Find out more at chadandsandy.com or call 414-6200. My son and I just built a rabbit hutch for two bunnies he got the girls for Easter. That gives them a dog, three cats, a snake, a gecko, and two bunnies. At Zero Res, we love pets. If you are a pet lover and need some help cleaning up after those furry friends, give Zero Res a call. For April, Zero Res is offering 25% off on all floor cleaning services. That's 25% off the cleaning of your carpets, tile and grout, vinyl and wood floors, and your area rugs. Zero Res, spelled forward or backwards, it's the right way to clean. Zero Res. 
Frank Frangie here. I was born and raised in Jacksonville, and I love living here. But I also know how bad bugs are in Florida. So I trust Orange Environmental Services to handle all my pest control needs because they've got the best technicians and effective treatment. Their name may be Orange, but they think green. Orange Environmental has been serving the First Coast for over 50 years, and they now offer complete lawn maintenance services. Call Orange Environmental Services for peace of mind from bug problems today. Call them at 272-3284. That's 272-3284. 1010XL is presented by Vara and Vara, exclusive injury law firm of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Protecting you and your family. Call 396-5555. Jacksonville. It's a big hair, heavy metal Friday on XL Primetime. With the 17th pick in the 2009 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Josh Freeman, quarterback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, <you know>. Bruce, <laughs> they finally get it. Hey. <laughs> I wish, hey, we move inside of seven minutes left in the fourth. Tampa down 14 to 10. Third down, Freeman throwing end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Tampa. Oh, boy, Josh Freeman. Josh Freeman, that's – we are now in the, in the early stages of our 17 days to number 17 pick. We're in the 2009 draft. It's Josh Freeman with the Buck. It's XL Primetime. Matt Hayes, Leon Cersei, Coach Dave Campo. Joe's hanging out with PGA Tour. We got one segment to go. Dave, the, the, the 29, 2009 draft with Josh Freeman. Josh Freeman was a big guy, big arm from K-State. Um, a lot of hope for him. Didn't play all that poorly early on. Kind of fizzled out in the end there with the Bucks. Yeah, uh, and, and that's a, kind of the nature of uh, – how about the, how about the guy uh, with the – we were talking about Houston Texans. How about the guy from Houston uh, that was the uh, quarterback Car. for SC? No. Uh, for SC. Oh, Sanchez? No, the beat SC from Texas uh, in the Rose Bowl. Vince Young. Oh, Vince Young. Young. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. The first oh, you year. said Texans. You meant Titans. Yeah, I mean yeah, yeah. the Titans. Uh, uh, Vince Young, you know, I was a secondary coach here at the time, so I saw him twice, you know, during, the, during right. that mm-hmm. year. Right. And the first year, you know, everybody was talking, the media was talking about this guy is going to be in the Hall of Fame. And I'm watching his accuracy, and I'm saying – I don't think so. I, I'm not sure about this guy. And he turned out to be the same way. So when you pick somebody uh, at quarterback, just look at the, the draft with Trevor, the guys that mm-hmm. turned out. It's it's a little bit of a crapshoot with a quarterback, I can tell you. I can tell you this in that 2009 draft. Um, one, two, three, four, four picks after Josh Freeman. A guy named Alex Mack, center from Cal, who played about – Great 14 player. years in the league. Yeah. A great player. Great player. Mm-hmm. Yep. I don't know if he's Hall of Famer. Because Leon likes to look at these at these former drafts and see how many of these guys are Hall of Famers. It looks like, what, one right now from the 09 draft? Mm. Just Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford. Like. Yeah, the Matthew Stafford's probably the only guy. That's probably, probably about a it. surefire Hall of Famer. Right, right. There's that's My point is you can get, and you were talking about, you know, the big guys. It's all about the line of scrimmage. Um, you get a guy like JPJ from Oregon, or you can get Fatanu. If that something happens and they fall there, that's I mean that's it's going to be difficult to say no to because once you get a guy that has that attitude, a young guy that you bring him on there, not only does it filter to the rest of the team, they all start to like want to be at that level, correct? Right, exactly. Yeah, I think I think that you know guys that look when you're talking about you win and lose in, up front. And one way or the other, and we were just talking about that off the air. You you have to you have to rush the quarterback. That's why everybody was disappointed that we didn't get a third pass rusher last year. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you uh, somebody that could affect the quarterback on third down. Really, Ian is what you're talking about. But also protecting the quarterback. It, you know, if uh, protecting the quarterback is is not just pass protection. It's running, running the football the ball. as well. Mm-hmm. And the only way you run the football is to out-physical the guy on the other side of the ball. And there's some pretty darn good defensive guys out there. On the middle three. Yeah. your offensive line. Exactly. You got the block. Which is the guards. Yeah. And so, to me, I'm still – that's why I still lean on taking a big guy if it's available. And, Mm -hmm. Serge, there's a – there's those middle three, they're different people. 
That's, yeah. You got to have a different attitude, right? Yeah, I ain't want none of that when I was playing. <laughs> I listen, they get you would have fit it. Though. Uh, yeah, I would have fit in there yeah. though. But but I'm just saying, those guys. I mean, you got to understand what the, the makeup, the makeup and the characteristics of being down there. First and foremost, you got to be tough, mean, and nasty. Uh, you you just you got to bring your lunch pail and your hard hat every day because you're going up against guys who nine times out of ten outweigh you, probably stronger than you. And you're dealing with you're dealing with six four six five, three twenty three twenty. You, yeah, you long arms. I mean, so I mean you, and then there, there's got to be this collectiveness between the 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 guard and, and the guards in the center because you have to deal with one threes and mics. Yeah. Right, you have one threes and mics, and they they'll they'll what cross dog your coach. They'll, yeah, they'll, oh, yeah. They'll, they'll do all kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and it's your responsibility as the interior three to make sure you. Anything in the middle is protected. Whatever you got to do to make sure your quarterback don't get hit, you've got to do it. So, right? Dave, why why is it why are guards not seen as a value pick in the draft? Then, if they're so critical into the run game, if they're so critical and now even more so well, in pass pro, why well, are they not seen as a, as important or value picks? I should well, say. because you can get some doubles on those guys. In mm-hmm. other words, you can use your tackles to help. Your center can help the guard. The, the, the tackle can help the guard. So what you get in there, you get guys that aren't, when you look at them on film, they're not. There are a lot more guys that are big and strong than there are big and, and fast athletic. and athletic, outside, like right. the tackles. Right. Right. That's mm-hmm. why they're there. But it's a fist fight because you know darn good and well that nine out of ten times you're going to get a helmet-to-helmet helmet shot mm-hmm. with yeah. the defensive lineman in there. Mm-hmm. So you know you got to be a tough, well, just like Leon's talking about. Yeah. I mean, well, I I think guys like Aaron Donalds and Chris Jones has changed the the outlook on what you uh, from what an you, athletic uh, athletic standpoint, standpoint right. what right. you need from guards. All right, let yeah. me just tell you this as we wrap up with our anthem. You guys have now brought me all the way back to guard guard. I'm fired <laughs> up. I am fired up. Man. All right, we're wrapping up here. You got the Frangie Show next. You got Baloo after that, and Hacker after dark after that. For Joe C. at the PGA Tour, for Leon, Dave Campbell, and Matt Hayes, we will see you on Monday. Come on, Joe. That ain't good enough. You got to set the blood out my mouth. Let's go, baby. Whoa! Buckle up. You're in the First Coast Honda Dealer Studios with XL Primetime on 1010XL. Find your new Honda at your eight local Honda dealers. Some players have talent, others have heart. But tonight, I've seen players with talent who I didn't know had any. 1010XL. And others with heart who I thought only had talent. Where talent meets heart. What makes a Honda certified pre-owned vehicle so special? 182-point inspection, 24-7 roadside assistance, first-year free oil changes, and a seven-year, 100,000-mile warranty for carefree driving backed by American Honda. Visit your local Honda dealer today. When my wrist pain was acting up and I needed help, I took Dan Higgins' advice and headed over to see the experts at Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. This is Stuart Moore with the PGA Tour. I highly recommend Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Whenever you have a need, they took great care of me. They'll take great care of you. This is Dr. Kevin Murphy. The next time you need orthopedic care, you can rely on our team at Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Relieve pain and get back to life. Southeast Orthopedic Specialists. Craig Franzi here for Stanley Pools. There's a reason so many of my friends and our listeners have had Stanley Pools build their pools and now maintain their pools.